you know, coming to you live from World Championship in San Jose. Welcome to the Living Legends Podcast. How's it going, everyone? And welcome back to another episode of the Living Legends Podcast, a weekly Flesh and Blood podcast where we talk about all aspects of the Flesh and Blood trading card game. As always, I am joined by the boys, Bill from the Spike Feeders Fab. How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode. Uh, this is going to be a holiday episode where we just talk about our aspirations. It's another kind of free form one like last week. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're looking really, we're, I'm looking forward to it a lot. Yeah, people seem yeah. to really like that one too. Uh, we got a lot, yeah. of, a, lot, a lot of good feedback, which is great. And we are joined by Az from Go Again Gaming. Hello, everybody. Uh, as you can see, I'm in the bar, just chilling out with uh, with Azalea there and Briar. Everyone's having a great time. And we're going to have a little drink as well. Oh, dude. <laughs> mm. Oh, now I feel... Happy holidays, yeah. everybody. I feel ill-prepared. <laughs> Ill I need to go get a drink later. Um, <laughs> though for me, for me to peel back the curtains a little bit, it's only like 1 p.m. It's all getting closer to 2. And for Az, it's a little bit later in the day, I, I think. Yeah, it um, is, yeah. Yeah, about 10 o'clock here, 10 p.m., um so uh so yeah rightly so having a drink having a beverage uh, a week before christmas so uh oh, yeah. so yeah this is one of those situations little, where, uh, where... yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's, just, it's one of those situations where folks will say like you know it's, it's five o'clock somewhere well it's literally exactly. ten, 10 o'clock where as is so i can just yeah i can just go pound a pound a drink and be like yeah i'm just it's, it's 10 o'clock yeah, it's, it's 10 o'clock, yeah. It's not it's 10 o'clock, yeah. It's, that's not two. <laughs> I'll, I'll get a drink. So we're, we're going to do like a uh, UPF live stream after this. I'll get a drink for that. How about that? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sweet. Yeah. Um, well, like... Kel, Kel, in, uh, Kel in San Jose was drinking a, a drink called Phoenix Rising. Oh, it was so <laughs> from... tasty. What even was that? I can't even remember even what that was. <laughs> I don't remember, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was really good though. I'll say that. Did it have triple sec in it? I don't remember. It was really good. It was really tasty. So I got multiple mm. Phoenix Risings and then I got the mana potion. Um, yeah. which is like the blue one. It wasn't as tasty though. It was, it was pretty strong, but it wasn't as good as the Phoenix Rising. Phoenix Rising was, was, was quite, so it was quite strong. It was quite strong. It was like, it had like soju or something in it, didn't it? Like yeah. proper strong. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for sure. Uh, um, yeah, it was, was good, it was was good time. Hey, well next year, and this is a, a sort of a segue. We're still going to talk about a week in Flesh and Blood, but I'll say mm. next year it'd be great to have the entire Living Legends crew, um, you know, for a drink. Really? And, I, and uh, that's one of the things I'm looking forward to the most next year. We'll talk about that when the when we get around to that yeah, yeah. major segment of today's yeah. episode. But before we do, let's talk mm. about our weeks in Flesh and Blood. Um, I will go ahead and start, and you guys can think about what you want to talk about. Mine's really quick, so I'll, I'll just say real quick. Um, I've just been uh, building decks and doing my normal stuff, like making YouTube videos, um, thinking about various topics. I have been fine-tuning my No Fuse Lexi 2.0 list, uh, which is oh, yeah. uh, it's a Blit Blitz Lexi list. It's the uh, a new version of the list that I took to the Calling Las Vegas and the team the team Calling. Um, I, I did pretty well there, and you know, just playing Lexi. Um, and not an ice control build, but like a more aggro, no fuse build. The idea is you make use of um, Voltaire and giving all your arrows go again, or plus one depending on what you need. Sometimes both if you have bolt and shot. Um, yeah, I was going to say that's a you can turn you can turn you can turn that go wide on straight away with a plus oh, one yeah. anyway, can't you? Yeah, mm -hmm. bolt um, and shot. Oh man, that card is so good. The the new <laughs> the new tech from Dynasty is. Um, uh, heat seeker which i think is great it's a one for five yep. that if it hits you could put the top card of your deck into your arsenal face up um so if you hit with two you actually get two cards in your arsenal if you're running new horizon which i am so that that that's yep. like the dream is to get hit them twice with uh with the uh, heat seeker and then have like a <laughs> six, six card hand and four cards plus two in arsenal Ooh, that's that's the spice um, that is nice, yeah. That's spicy that's yeah. that's how i always liked to play lexi when i was playing her i would let my opponent go first they could do whatever they wanted on their first turn, and I go, okay, activate Voltaire twice. Yeah. Two cards in Arsenal, let's go! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and then the other card that I actually didn't realize what it exactly did is Drill Shot. So, Drill Shot... Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, really a it's a zero for four, and it, it has, like, a buff if, you have an, if it has an aim counter, but what I didn't realize is that even if it doesn't have an aim counter, 
it still yeah. triggers the on hit effect of putting a minus one counter on your opponent's equipment. And I was like, I thought it had to have the I thought it had to have the aim counter on it to do that. Not and, second part, no. Yeah, yeah. And so and so just as yeah. a zero for four to give a minus one to any of your opponent's things is super sweet. And so I, I've yeah, been actually playing with that. Strong. I've been playing with that as well. Um, so got some got some fun tech. I I want to I wanted to include a couple de- defensive cards. And so I've been playing around with even bigger than that and uh, uh, feign death. They're mm. interesting, and because it's blitz, it's all suited towards your meta, right? So if you are playing against a lot of phi type decks, even bigger than that is amazing. Um, but if you're playing against a lot of, like, really tall effects, Feign Death can be good. They have to, they have to just do it twice, at least twice. Um, mm. So against certain Rune Blades, it's actually quite good. Where they're attacking yeah. you with something big and, like, one Rune Chant. So you take, like, you take the Rune Chant and then you Feign Death their giant, big old chunky attack. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. Become the Arknight or whatever. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. Um, yeah. I'll have a deck. I found uh, yeah. I've seen um, I've seen that there's a lot of OTK viscerize going around now, that like the looming doom deck as well, where all your rune chants can pop for two instead. A I, lot of uh, OTK going around. I, I feel a little hipstery about that because like I was like on the on the OTK bandwagon literally when Arcane Rising came out because that was like one of my first <laughs> decks was OTK viscerai, but it was like yeah, yeah, you've been waiting for this moment. <laughs> it was very very simplified. And it's had it's had a couple iterations, um, but the 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 old school way you did it was uh, you just build a bunch of rune chants and then you play Slogism, uh, Arknight Ascendancy. So it's like Slogism eleven dominate plus like a, a crap load of rune chants. That that was that was the the plan. And now you yeah. have all this new newfangled stuff. At one point you did Bloodsheath Skeleta and um, Sonata Sonata. Those got yeah. banned in some form, in multiple formats. So it's you can't do that really. Um, yeah, but it was uh, too good. <laughs> but I'm, and, and there's like spellbound creepers, which is also kind of like, kind of gross. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm down for it. Down for the OTK viscerai. Um and I'll, yeah. I'll I'll feign death your big old stupid attack. That's it's what happened <laughs> to me. It's what happened to me in Arcane Rising. It's what's what'll happen. Uh, if you play against my Lexi, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's let's nice. speaking of Ranger, we'll, we'll we'll pass it off to Az. Az, how about hmm. your week? Your week in Flesh and Blood. Yeah, so uh, so my week um, for people that are tuning to Go Again Gaming every week, I do Tuesday and Thursday live streams now, and obviously I play Azalea exclusively on those live streams. Um, and speaking of Feign Death, uh, I actually won a game against. Um, there's a there's a obviously a a massive focus on dash at the moment and just boosting you're in you, oh, yeah. everything has go again um and uh last week i actually died to a maximum velocity so i i i, I was play, i was playing a fatigue oh, wow. game plan i was playing a fatigue game plan i i always run like 69 cards way in my deck <laughs> nice um, <laughs> um i always I always run a huge deck and uh, I got to the point where I fatigued the dash out, and they had like two, three three cards left in their deck, and I had about twenty nine or something like that. And I was like, "Yeah, this is easy. I've won this." Um, and uh, they came in right at the end with a maximum velocity, which just killed me, just outright. Oh, um, and I and I was just bam- I was bamboozled. I was like, "For goodness' sake!" I thought I had them on the ropes there. I was I was running the fatigue game plan really well. Um, I think that's what you kind of have to do against the boost dash because you, you know that they're just going to be leaking damage no matter what you block. But yeah. yeah, if you get them down to that last two or three cards, I, I thought I had the game in the bag, but I didn't. So speaking of feign death, I added that to the list because obviously in dash, you're always getting hit multiple times. You're always bleeding damage. Sure. And that's what happened in that last turn. I, ble- I bled quite a lot of damage, but if I had that feign death when that maximum velocity came in, I would have survived. And that's what I did mm-hmm. in this in this other game this week. And I won for, by utilizing that strategy. I only have one feign death in the list. Um, but um, yeah, managed to... Uh, to stop that from happening by having that feign death there. So um, I think it was the same dash player as well. So, um, so yeah. But watch out for that, people. But um, yeah. Just, yeah, thought, I, just thought I'd get on the feign death train. <laughs> I, I really hope Azalea gets eventually... I mean, I really like the new the new Great Bow. 
But I really wish mm. she had a bow that also you could do at instant speed, like um, like Voltaire. Mm. Because like that's one of the reasons I like Feindeth and Lexi, is that I don't feel like I'm wasting resources, because Feindeth costs one to play. So I could still like pitch a yellow Feindeth and still activate my bow to get some yeah. value yeah. out of that resource. Um that that's one of that's the the one thing I don't like about Fain Death is that it costs one to play. One. And it Yeah. So it costs two cards out of your hand unless you're using a tunic, which is which is kind of not where you want to be with Ranger, because Ranger is very stingy. Ranger's a very stingy class because yep. you have to filter everything through a bow. Um proper stinge, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But Yeah, proper stinge. Yeah. That's another thing I'd like as well, because I always like um I always I used to have all of the take covers in my deck, oh, every yeah. single one, blue, blue, yellow, and red, for the sheer for the sheer reason that if you go if you go uh, second, um, what you can do is you can play a take cover to block whatever they're throwing at you, maybe bleed some damage, but you reload a card into your arsenal. So when it's your turn, when you have the um, you, you know when your opponent can't refresh their hand, you already have a five card hand because you drew up and you've got a card in your arsenal. And you similar to Voltaire, you can do that, right? You can put something in your arsenal on your opponent's turn and then crack back with yeah. a six card hand or a five card hand because you've already loaded it instant speed. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I mean, like take cover, so, like it's always been great too because you can take mm -hmm. cover. So you can if you, if you if you have a heavy block turn, you can block a bunch, take cover, and then arsenal a zero cost arrow at least. So you can still fire yeah. something off. Whereas otherwise, yeah. if you had a one card hand and it's an arrow, I mean, good luck. Like you have to filter yeah. it through your bow. So unless you're running like red liner or if you have like a tunic or something, like you can't shoot your arrow at all, even if it's cost zero, which which sucks. Yeah. Um, and even yeah. in even in my even in my deck as well, you can reload something like a snatch and still play a snatch out and threaten four damage yeah. and a card in your arsenal from the on hit. So yeah, it is. Yeah, reload is very good. I just wish there was a bow that said reload at instant speed because you could then reload traps in. You could reload yeah. other cards in that aren't arrows. Yeah, you know, I, but we'll... yeah. I, I hope they do that eventually. Yeah. I Ian Ian has a really cool theory about that, and he he really wants them to there to be like a trap master, and um, yeah. I think that would fit flavor wise at least in uh, Savage Lands. So have like this like big game hunter trap master ranger where they oh, like definitely, yeah. like do that kind of stuff. I think that would be really cool. Um, so yeah. hopefully, hopefully someday. Nice. Maybe maybe traps will be actually playable. <laughs> actually playable then. Yeah. And not <laughs> like <laughs> I'm not gonna go on trap rant right now, but <laughs> oh god, traps. Traps are okay. um, traps trap are tirade. Yeah. Yeah, really. <laughs> anyway, Bill, um, how about you, man? Oh, unless, uh, unless Az has more to say. I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off, man. I was just, just going to say as well, what, one more thing as well. I've got two two other things printed this week, which are obviously going to be mm. part of, basically, if, if you're in the live stream, you sometimes have a chance to win certain things. Obviously, one of them is the Azalea Cult membership card, which are these things. Oh, you can't really see them because it's green screen, yeah, green can't, screen. Can't, can't, can't really see them and then we got we got a new poker chip as well which you probably won't be able to see either yeah there we go there's a teaser for you <laughs> oh you can see the aim, you can see the aim part you can kind of see you can kind of see it nice there's a teaser um nice. so uh so yeah a uh, nice little aim counter because uh, as james said uh, james white said that the sand scar great bow is a key piece for ranger in the future so yeah. probably we're going to see a lot of aim counter matter stuff in right. outsiders i imagine yeah i oh, sure if that's so. the case here, here's like a kind of a freebie but not something that a lot of folks have talked about if all of the arrows have aim counters in outsiders that means we probably have a new token rarity bow that puts aim counters on like because it just ha you just have to have one for like yeah. limited that, that works. It has to be accessible, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Just a thought. Yeah, you can't just be running the majestic sand scour, can you? Right. You know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. So, yeah. I'll be interested to see. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Didn't think about that. Um, and, and for the, the audio audio only listeners, when Az was showing off his cool poker chip, uh, you literally weren't missing of course. any. You literally weren't missing anything <laughs> because it, it was like blending in with the, his green screen. <laughs> Then the green screen. screen. And just, if you if you're if you're watching this, if you're li listening to this on audio version, then just go and give the video a view as well. You'll be able to see it. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's a doubling up, baby. Yeah. yeah. Even if even if you don't even if you don't li listen to the whole thing on the on the YouTube, just give it a view and it's lovely old job, really. Yeah. Just comment. Just comment down below. Lovely old job. Do it. 
Comment down below. Yeah. Lovely, yeah. Old job. Comment, yeah. lovely old job. Yeah. That's very yeah. There we go. Oh, that's so good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Like, how, Bill, how about you, man? How, how how's your week in Flesh and Blood been? My week in Flesh and Blood was great, actually. I um I, I think I mentioned this last week, but I put together a deck to uh, help out one of my friends from high school who uh, finally got a chance to play Flesh and Blood with. He uh, wanted to play Lexi, so I put together a Lexi deck for him, and he was able to play in our our local tournament that we have on Mondays. And uh, yeah, had, he had a good time. I ended up going two and one with Agro Prism. Nice. Um, I did the thing that my deck does, which is prey on round one because people just don't expect it. <laughs> um, yeah. And then always in the in the like one X bracket, or I guess it would be the one O bracket. Is that's where all the guardians and brutes live. Right, so my deck yeah. immediately dies. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but um, yeah, so I was able to go two one. They they had a good time, and then ended up uh, basically converting one of our other friends, one of our other mutual friends. Uh, he was like, "Hey, so when you and and uh, my friend's name is Mark, um, when you and Mark were talking about flesh and blood the other day, kind of sounded interesting." Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> We uh, got together on Thursday and uh, hung out and played some Flesh and Blood, and I built nice. a, a dash deck for my one friend, uh, and then my friend Mark, who had Lexi, and then he also wanted to try out Dorinthia, so I was like, okay, nice. well, I'll just put together some like starter version decks for these, um, and then we can try them out, and you guys can just have them. Like There, there was you you know, a couple it. goodies in there, but it wasn't anything too crazy. And uh, I just saw both of them again recently, and their first thing that they asked me when they saw me was, hey, so um, where do you buy flesh and blood cards? <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah. From the last time I had seen them, they were like, yeah, I want to buy I want to buy more stuff. I buy more cards. It, nice. Absolutely love and, to see it. That's awesome. Yeah. So really pumped about that. And then there's an, another friend of mine who I hadn't seen in almost like two years because of the pandemic. Uh, apparently he just also independently tried out flesh and blood. And he's like, I want to make a Reinar death. <laughs> nice wow and uh yeah so in the past like week two weeks i've uh just had a lot of interest from some old friends that i mean they were the original group of people that i played Yu-Gi-Oh with in high school and then we also played magic like we've been playing card games together for for so long and uh yeah it's just it's it's really nice i'm really excited and if any of them are listening right now yeah i i, I like it hello <laughs> also, Bi hi. hello bill's friends <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every well, time I that? every time I say like, oh hey, sorry, I have to go film a podcast. My friends are like, you have a podcast? <laughs> oh, hey, <laughs> Bloods podcast. Boy now, Blood podcast, Living Legends. Let's go. Let's go. The premier well, tri international Flesh and Blood podcast. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Canada, UK, and USA, baby. Yeah, yeah we're um, all over. You can't get you can't get rid of us. Occasionally, yes. occasionally New Zealand as well, because <laughs> we've had a, a a good number of guests Basically. from LSS and also Ian, That's who was true. who was yeah. from LSS. So yeah, um, yeah. yeah, that's awesome, man. Like, awesome. love to see Flesh and Blood growing. A lot of people picking it up, especially like organically, like how you said a couple friends like independently started picking it up, which I think is super cool. Uh, yeah. yeah, like it just it still has that sort of intrigue, that power. Um, I mean, power sounds like such a dorky way to say it, but yeah, it's like you see it around and you're like, it don't like the thing that one of my friends said was, um, you know, they were going to try picking up Yu-Gi-Oh again, but one of our local game stores just didn't have any Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And then a bunch of them that were in this new archetype that had just come out um, were like too expensive or sold out. And it's like, well, do you want to try Flesh and Blood? The intro decks are only like 15 bucks. And it's like, OK, oh. <laughs> so that actually reminded me you, you mentioning Yu-Gi-Oh. And people wanted to play Yu-Gi-Oh! actually reminded me. Not not in a positive way for Yu-Gi-Oh! I feel bad for Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, no, I don't. But um, <laughs> I uh, recently saw the um, the November product report for ICV2. So they put out... If you don't know what ICV2 is, they're a... I don't know what you would call it, like an or organization company that keeps track of uh, tabletop gaming um, sales and statistics, more or less. Mm. They have like a... Uh, subscription newsletter like kind of magazine type thing I'm, i don't have that but i i do follow them on twitter and i do see a lot of the stuff and i like to keep up with this kind of thing and um to no surprise to anyone the 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 november list came out of the, the top selling products right um yeah. yeah and it was magic and pokemon 
basically dominated like the top 13 or whatever. It's just all magic and Pokemon, but then there, and there are millions of products. So it does it individually by product. I'll, I'll say that. So it's like, you know, magic product, Pokemon product, different Pokemon product, different magic product, different magic product. And those games just have so many products, whatever, of course. So if you, if you cut out all of the different products, it was like magic, number one, Pokemon, number two, number three, flesh and blood. Um, no. Flesh and blood no. was flesh and blood. It was, it was like magic Pokemon back and forth until you got to flesh and blood for dynasty. So one product, just the only product flesh and blood did one product dynasty, clean, <laughs> simple, perfect. And then after that, there was, I think, Digimon and One Piece were somewhere, like, beneath beneath uh, Flesh and Blood. Um, mm-hmm. And why the Yu-Gi-Oh! thing reminded me of this is Yu-Gi-Oh! was not on there at all, even though they released multiple products. So despite having yeah. multiple products released, not only did Flesh and Blood push it out, but also Digimon and One Piece. And I'm not saying Yu-Gi-Oh! is dead. Obviously, people play Yu-Gi-Oh! It's a very popular game. But what I am saying is that... Um, I think Flesh and Blood is maybe um, making more of a mark than non-Flesh and Blood fans would like to admit. Is, oh, yeah. Uh, it, is what I'd like to say. Yeah. It's, it's got waves. It's, it's going. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. such a good game. Like, it's so cool. Yeah. I, I don't know how mm. people could still doubt it and so, how some people could still think it's like, like a scam or something. Like, I, yeah. So Flesh and Blood, it's here to stay. It's a fantastic game. If you are one of the folks listening, this one I'm kind of I'm kind of wearing that on my sleeve, where it's like, yeah, it's a scam, it's a pump and dump, whatever. Like, <laughs> because all the people who would be willing yeah. to believe that are probably people I wouldn't want to play with anyway. P- pump and dump, yeah, scheme. exactly. Pump and dump. Scheme. Sorry to anybody who's listening that does believe that. <laughs> no, I'm not not, not, not sorry, not sorry. <laughs> you can go. Hey, if you think it's a pump and dump scam, you can go back to buying your twelfth secret layer for the year. All right, like. And just, yeah. have, and just have fun with that. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Right, let's go. <laughs> uh, hey, I say that in jest because I actually bought one secret layer. I bought the Junji Ito secret layer because oh, yeah. I love Junji, Junji Ito. Ito is fantastic. I, was, I was actually very torn about it too because I was, I was uh, this was um, a little bit after I was hanging out with the professor. I think we were uh, going out for like lunch after helping him do like some content type stuff. And uh, I was just talking and I was like, like we were talking about magic and all the crap going on with magic, and I was just like, I, I kind of want to buy a pro- I kind of want to buy one of the secret layers. I feel really bad, um, and it's like <laughs> my one of my favorite manga co, one of my favorite manga artists is doing a secret layer like Junji Ito, and and Prof was just like, if you want it, just just buy it. If you like it, just just buy it, and don't worry about like Watsi and giving money to him or whatever. Just if you like it, just go for it. And I was like, you know what, I will. And so I did. Yeah. I did. I, <laughs> and not only that, I think it was like not that much more expensive. I bought the other manga artist one too. So I bought the Junji Ito one, and then I bought the other one who does like the Metal Gear Solid art. I forget his name. Oh yeah. Um, so I, oh. I bought the I bought the two like weeb weeb ones. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love a good um, weeb. Of course. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. That's that's like the only mad magic product I've bought in a while. Actually, as and I bought some to play. To play a little bit. Yeah, wasn't season. it the Warhammer ones? The we did play, yeah. we, did, we did play the Warhammer ones, which are pretty fun. Yeah. Pretty mm. fun. Um, but anyway, back <laughs> back on track. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> it, it was surprising for me to to have Yu Gi Oh like to see Yu Gi Oh not in the list at all, like not even show up in the top. Mm. It was like twenty or something, or maybe even more than that, like thirty. Um, I think it just speaks to how the the tabletop and TCG industry is changing. And it's not how it was, like, it's not this thing where, like, Magic and Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! are, like, these immutable entities that, like, can't be moved. Um, and I think we'll see more of that going forward, too. So, yeah. And I think There's it's just not... a lot more, um, there's just a lot more choice now, isn't there? You know, if yeah. you want to have a, you know, an anime card game, if there's, a, if there's a few to choose from. If you want to have a high fantasy card game, you know, Flesh and Blood is probably the only one until Sorcery comes out. But again, that's a completely different experience because it's more board gamey, more splashy. Yeah, so mm-hmm. these card games do have to be, they do have to hone in on what they want to do. They can't try and be somebody else because somebody else is already there in the space. Yeah. You know? So, And like folks will see this on my channel already because it'll go up on Sunday. So it'll be a couple days. Uh, from the time of this posting, but 
I have a Battle Spirit Saga video coming out tomorrow, and one of the big focuses mm. that they want to do is um, have a very robust tournament scene. And I think that really isn't a thing for anime style card games right now. Um, and Battle yeah. Spirits, uh, this is a reboot of the Japanese game that I think it had a limited US release, but it's basically a reboot of a, one of the most popular games in Japan that's been around for years and has like 60 plus sets in Japanese. Um, wow. So it's kind of like a big game coming over and they have a million dollar tournament season. So they're kind of like the same that Flesh and Blood is putting out. So they, they yeah. really want they want really want to come on with force and be like, hey, we want to be the competitive anime game. If you like this kind of stuff, if you're a tournament grinder and you want to win some money, play this game. Um, and I think they that... and they have do they have Japanese Japanese uh, language as well? Then Japanese language products so, as well. So Battle Spirits already exists in Japanese. It's still around and it's very uh. very popular. So this Battle Spirit hmm. Saga is kind of like a a soft well not really a soft it's it's like a reboot. For the Western market, so it does have a little bit different mechanics. Mostly, it's the same, um, mm. but it's a reboot so that everyone is on the same playing field for the the big this big tournament season that they have kicking off. So it's all fresh for yeah. everyone. Um, mm. One of my really good friends, who's another content creator, he uh, it's like one of his favorite game systems of all time, which was honestly what sold me on it and you know made me actually take a look at it. Um, it and yeah, so like the whole point of this is like. What what they were saying? What what my I can't remember if As or Bill said this, but uh, it the the landscape is changing, and um, if you can find a good niche, then I think you can really, really uh, get some traction there, because a lot of the a lot of the big card games are leaving leaving it up like like there's a lot of space to fill in, right? So yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, because the 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 titans of industry as they currently are. Um, mm have kind of just allowed themselves to get too comfortable um, yeah. because for the yeah. longest time, like magic was absolutely a, a god of the space because oh, yeah. it's like they couldn't do anything wrong. They would always have people. Gods don't bleed. But it's like at some point in the last, you know, five years, they've started making decisions where it's like, uh, not everybody's onto these and they're sort of losing their their footing here um again this isn't like slander for flesh and for magic this is like just how <laughs> i'm feeling about it but also from what i've seen um yeah. and then yeah that just kind of allowed the space to have enough i don't want to use the word space again but have like enough of <laughs> yeah. a, an opportunity <laughs> for other games to sort of fill that niche and so we exactly, we have yeah. seen the 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 boost in that where it's like there's the new digimon game that people are yep. really into it's a fun game um there's uh you know as however you want to feel about that one what, what was the one with the cryptids i've already forgotten oh um, metazoo metazoo that was a big thing like uh, objectively it was a big thing it was popular it was being sold at my local game store like it, it was a thing and then now we have flesh and blood which is like topping lists of like this game is good this game is yeah. sick <laughs> i i think yeah. I, I think flesh and blood is like the harbinger of this new wave of games I think it, it's yeah. proven to to people that like a new game can ex can like succeed if it's good enough. Um, mm -hmm. But you, but you have to be good. Like that's the thing. I don't think you can just rely on IPs like a lot of companies have wanted to do for many many years. Because for many many years before like twenty twenty, I want to say any new card games that came out are usually just kind of like I don't want to call them cash grabs because I think that I think that phrase is way overused. But um, they're they're like cynical games, or they're just like okay, we'll slap an IP on this like very rudimentary game system and try to make money off mm. of the popularity, right? And that's where you get things like the Austin Powers card game, and yeah. like or like there was a there was a tie-in. Um, I mean, like the original Star Wars TCG. I know that there, are, I've seen discussion about how people really appreciated it, and it was like a good game. I think objectively it wasn't a good game. Um, yeah, very, most of those games obtuse. that are ties in where it's just like screen grabs of like a movie, like yeah. just a scene oh, yeah. from a movie. All of those feel so disingenuine to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, none of those feel like the game is being built because the game is good. It's being built because it makes money. <laughs> yeah. I, I've always felt yeah. very strongly against uh, 
uh, screenshot art is what I'd like to call it. Because yeah. like anime anime card games are, are very uh, guilty of this too. Why Schwartz is like the biggest uh, offender where they literally just screen grab and like every anime in existence. Um, yeah. And uh, to me, I mean, this is just me being like a an old fart in the in the in the uh, gaming TCG space. But like when I, when I see a new card game, and if it if it has like the new X IP game or whatever, like One Piece for an example, I'm just like I sleep. Like yeah, I'm like I I, I don't care. Like I know a lot right. of a lot of folks who watch this channel, um, and a lot of folks on my Discord are really enjoying it, and that that's awesome. I will never. Yeah. Beekeep anyway. And if you want to play, everyone's welcome in the community. If you want to play whatever card game you want to play, if you want to play MetaZoo, if you want to play One Piece or whatever, I think that's awesome and I actually encourage it. The fact that people are want to play card games at all, I think is amazing. And I think the, the card game community should really be more open about that in general because we're a niche hobby, mm. right? We don't need to, to you know, gatekeep folks in our own hobby. Um, but at the same time, for me personally, I'm just like, I can't be bothered with with IP stuff, man, especially if it uses screenshot yeah. art, especially when there's so many like really passionate indie devs who are like giving it their all, sometimes literally all of their money and time to make these games yeah. um, like Flesh and Blood, we have a story of like James White literally like sleeping on the office floor because he had to like mortgage his house for Flesh and Blood, like like that level yeah. of passion to try to try yeah. to make it. Um, and uh and that's like and, that's and, also just another important distinction for me is like if you enjoy like say the Star Wars TCG yeah. where it's all the screen cap art and stuff if you enjoy the game that's not what I have the issue with the, th the thing that I have the issue with is the game itself like the yeah. the reason that the game exists but people can find joy in so many things and like that's yeah. I'm not trying to invalidate that <laughs> oh yeah yeah for sure it it's one of those things where like like I said yeah uh, I just, I just think if you're into card games at all, I think that's awesome. Um, yeah. But like for me personally, yeah. like, and this is all in the companies too. I'm like, especially like the big companies, like stop being so greedy and lazy. Like when these other mm. small indie games, like uh, Grand Archive, like Flesh and Blood is, it was a bigger, bigger indie game, but like Grand Archive, small indie game, uh, Sorcery, small indie game. They, they have like original characters with hand-drawn art, like in the case of Sorcery or original commissioned art. That's expensive. It takes a lot yeah. of time and a lot of money to do that. And if these indie games with like, you know, shoestring budgets or just kind of doing it on their own can do it, then like who uh, who, who has One Piece? Bandai. Who has, um, uh, what was the other one? Well, these games, like, come on. Like, you can, you can afford to like commission some art like come on yeah. now like to, to make people your game would love to make art for a one piece game <laughs> like, like i know they do there's, I know there's a, a little huge bit, fan base it, it just feels lazy and it feels like they don't care as much um mm. yeah i'm sure the devs the people who are like making the mechanics they probably care because they probably spending a lot of time on it but like yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty i'm pretty critical on that kind of stuff um Especially, like I said, when I see games like Flesh and Blood and Grand Archive and all these uh, Grim Path recently, uh, these games with like this this beautiful original artwork, um, I don't think big companies have an excuse anymore. Like, oh. if if these yeah. small people small... just wanna, they just wanna, they just wanna capitalize on nostalgia, don't they? Look at Disney Lorcana, you know. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. If, if someone brought out a well, they've already done this like LCG style game, but you know, like if they brought out a Marvel TCG, you know, they they know they're going to make loads of money because people already know the characters. It's a lazy way of doing it to a certain degree. Yeah. Whereas you know the, these game companies like Grim Path or other other TCG companies that are just making new characters, new art, you know, that we've never seen before, that invokes another feeling entirely. It's like, oh, what's this? This is a new character. I can get behind this, but yeah. Yeah, so many things like even the movie industry is just rebooting, rebooting, mm -hmm. rehashing, redoing things all the time. Yeah. Games as well, you know, people are relying on IPs too much these yeah. days. And it's starting to show. Yeah, a hundred percent. And so, like, I'm way more keen to check out like um a, like a brand new thing. Sometimes, you know, yeah. it, it, there a lot of them. I'll be honest, like what a lot of people say, a lot of them are hit and miss, right? A lot of the the card games that pop up on on Kickstarter. Most of them will will fail. I would probably ninety plus percent of them 
will not fail for multiple reasons. But yeah. some of them will probably succeed for other reasons as well. Um, and I'm more interested in just checking those out in general because, mm-hmm. um, yeah, like I said, I, I can really tell if a game has a lot of like passion and uh, like thought behind it rather than just like some some suits in a business room or like, all right, what what's popular right now? Oh, card games? Card games are really popular in, in, in 2021? <laughs> all right, we need a card game. Need a card game. Print it. Like... Do, do Let's print some have. money. Yeah, they're like good. <laughs> there's a good example of this sort of uh, guys in suits capitalizing on stuff. It's um, oh, <laughs> I don't even remember what it was called, but it was the it was the magic ARPG. Um, oh, oh, yes, I know. I got into oh, the beta wow. for that because I was excited. I too. I was like, I was like, oh, a magic. This is when I was a little less cynical on magic. Um, I was like, oh, a magic RPG like Diablo sounds awesome and i was like this is sweet um and i played it and i i literally played it for maybe like a couple hours and i'm like i'm really bored like i i tried so hard like (laughs) this doesn't even feel like magic even though there's like hey there's rel zarek okay bye rel zarek now i'm fighting some generic things they don't even look like magic enemies they're just like random just crap it's just like i'm a random (laughs) plant monster i'm a random whatever it's not even like iconic magic things it's not like a shivan dragon comes down you fight the shivan dragon or like a sengir yeah. vampire or angel or sarah angel it's just like You're fighting the stop. the plants in the background of the city of ravnica it's like okay yeah. i could <laughs> i could tell you more names of like diablo enemies than this game and like i like the in diablo there's like the little fallen Go like wreck in the shoe, yeah. and then they like summon them. That is like wreck in the shoe, yeah. They're like, <laughs> they're like infinitely more iconic than this magic game, and yeah. it's oh it's like God. but that almost is embarrassing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. That is far and away the the most ham fisted attempt to like. Oh, we we see that uh, action RPGs are really popular right now because people are liking you know. There's Path of Exile, and there was the one from Amazon. I've uh, there, there's the Korea. Yeah, it was from, originally from Korea. Uh, Lost Ark. Lost Ark, yeah. yeah. Which is really... Um, so there's like there's all these uh, action RPGs that people are really interested. Let's make one for, for Magic. And I think I remember hearing what they ended up doing was the company that made it had the framework for an action RPG already in place. Ah, and see. then Wizards of the Coast like contacted them and was like, hey, we want this thing. And they're like, oh yeah, well, we have the like basically 99% of a game already done. And they're like, oh, cool, slap our IP on it and send it out. And it's like, okay, well, do you want us to like tune it to be you and they're like no <laughs> like just no. <laughs> yeah it, and yeah. like i went to like one area and i couldn't even tell you it, was, it, it might have been zendikar it might have been it was just like a it was like a generic foresty area it didn't even feel like like magic and like oh man I, i'm pretty harsh on the, the magic stuff these days too uh as someone who literally has played magic since 1995 um mm-hmm. i started yeah. on fourth edition um it yeah it's kind of sad to be honest yeah um that was that one was tough to see i uh again like i was very excited for it you, when we got we were reached out to and it was like hey do you guys want to play this game do you want to like stream it we were like yeah that sounds sick <laughs> yeah um you know it's actually really fun i don't i don't talk about magic too much more cuz i know people are going to be like this is not a magic podcast um that's true <laughs> But if you want to play a fun solo single player magic game, the old Duels of the Planeswalkers, not the one that they made into like a a live service one, but the original like Duels of the Planeswalkers 2011, 2012, 2013. Oh, yeah. You would get them on like the Xbox Live store. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can still get them on Steam. Those are a lot of fun because they have like a single player campaign. There's like a, like a story mode. There's like a puzzle mode, which is my favorite. Uh, one of them had uh, Arc Enemy, where you can fight against like Nicol Bolas. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. A lot of fun. And that's a good way to, if you, if you want to play Magic and not give Hasbro any money, go, I mean, they probably get a little bit of it, but go buy it on Steam sale for like two bucks. And mm-hmm. there you go. <laughs> like, if you, if you don't want to play with like, play Arena or whatever. Um, so, yeah. <sighs> that's something I've, I don't think and we could tie this into Flesh and Blood. I don't think Flesh and Blood should do this, but I, it's something that I always wanted for Magic. I always wanted just a Magic video game where you could just play 
magic with like good effects. And I know like arena is kind of that, but that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is a game where it has like the first like 20 magic sets or whatever. And it's just like, I'm going to build my black Lotus Shivan dragon deck. And I could just do that. Like there, there is an old game. There is Chandelar. I'm aware of yep. Chandelar. The other one person out there who knows what the hell that is. I have played Chandelar. <laughs> it's awesome. It's different what I, than what I want, but it's still awesome. Um, like I like Chandelar in a very, like it, it's it's just a very like you found your your dad's old laptop, yeah, kind of way. <laughs> My, micro prose game like from the early early nineties. Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's that's let's, good stuff. Let's get back on Flesh and Blood. <laughs> let's, yeah. get, let's get back on Flesh and Blood. I think the whole point of this is to cap it all off is that Flesh and Blood is doing great right now, and it's uh, carving its own niche that is. Um, not just that, it's carving its own niche and also making way for other games, which is super important. So, mm -hmm. um, that obviously is good because we love Flesh and Blood, but also helps us go into the next topic, which is we're going to talk about next year, 2023. What we have in mind for 2023, personally, maybe what we hope mm -hmm. to see from Flesh and Blood in 2023. We do have a small roadmap. Um, and... Um, all of that kind of good stuff. I do also want to talk about UPF in particular as well, and I think it will relate into next year. Um, uh, so let's talk about UPF real quick before we get into this. I, I think it segues nicely. So recently, LSS has been kind of promoting Ultimate Pit Fight like quite a lot mm -hmm. on their website. So there was a, uh, a video that they posted on the website and also posted on the YouTube channel that was done by The Table Pit, which is a Ultimate Pit Fight YouTube channel, which is awesome. They're really, really nice folks, and they, they have some really fun gameplay. I watched uh, their video that they put on the LSS site. Um, and then there also has been multiple articles about Ultimate Pit Fight posted on the LSS, the official Flesh and Blood website. Um, so what that tells me is that not only is Ultimate Pit Fight something that Legend Story Studios is aware of, but it's something that they are actively pushing. And I think that's mm -hmm. really good because I personally love Ultimate Pit Fight. It is one of my favorite ways to play Flesh and Blood. Um, and I, I genuinely think that it could be a format for a lot of folks who are frustrated with like, the tournament scene and people being really spiky and, and all of this, all of this stuff. It could, it could be a great way to play with friends, a great way to play socially. Um, I want to use the word social instead of casual um, because mm -hmm. you can still be a little sweaty in Ultimate Pit Fight, but it's also like a very casual format. And I think it's good. And I think it has the potential to be one of the most popular formats in Flesh and Blood because of those reasons. The same way that Commander is one of the most popular form or is the most popular format in Magic, I think mm. Ultimate Pit Fight has that opportunity for Flesh and Blood. Um, and it's not, it's not like, I, I know some folks can see this as like, oh, maybe they just want it to be Commander. I don't think that's the case because I know some folks who work at LSS who have literally never played Magic. Like Ian Kenderdine uh, literally never played Magic a single time in his life. In fact, he's like very opposed to it. Um, he's one of the people who helped come up with Ultimate Pit Fight. So it's not something that like, it was come up from a, someone who's a fan of Commander who just is making an analog. Like, I think they just want a really fun, you know, multiplayer experience. And I do know, internally, they actually play Ultimate Pit Fight. Um, Alan Hale yeah. literally told me that there's going to be, like, a big LSS holiday UPF game that they're just going to be play like, internally with, like, the devs. Just for fun. That's awesome. <laughs> like, so yeah. I, I think there's a lot to be said about Ultimate Pit Fight. And how this is segueing to the next bit is I think... Ultimate Pit Fight could have a much, much larger space uh, in Flesh and Blood next year. It's something that I tried to push this year to some some degree. Um, mm. After I started doing my weekly live streams, I, I want to do at least one UPF game a month just to kind of play more UPF and kind of get more people um, aware of it. And I think the more people get aware of it, the, the greater popularity it grows. Um, Especially as folks, like I said, get burned out from like the really competitive formats. Because on our, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was on our last episode of the Living Legends or another video that I posted, but someone commented how uh, she and her husband went to an event. It was their first armor I event, and they just got absolutely dump dumpstered uh, because yeah. they 
they have a local scene that sounds like they're all like super, you know, highly tuned. I, you can call them sweaty, like tournament sweaty, grinders. Sweaty, yeah. Which is fine, you know, fine. People, it, Flesh and Blood's a game that attracts that kind of people because it's a competitive card game with a very good competitive um, infrastructure. So it's really good for folks who, who want to have that experience. But on the flip side, you can have these kind of other experiences where folks come in who are just like, I just played with the Blitz decks. They're really fun. Let's go to the local armory. And then they go in and they're, you know, I think they said that it was an, uh, analogous to like um, a bunch of sailors with clubs beating, beating on seals. Like they were, they were the yeah. seals. They're just like, arf, 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 and then just <laughs> bang. Yeah. Um, bang. Yeah. So literally I, crash over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> so I think ultimate pit fight could really help with that. Um, not only do you have a more fun social environment, you also have a format where like I played a lot and I rarely win. I've won a couple times, but like, I don't care. Like mm -hmm. I still have a mm -hmm. lot of fun. Like that's not the, yeah, winning is great and all, but like the, the point of it is just to have fun with your friends. Like, yeah, like, well, like I, uh, I was saying to, to somebody when I think, I think it was when I was hanging out with my friends on Thursday and they were mm -hmm. asking about like, oh, is there like a commander style format? Is oh, it yeah. only one V one or are there two V two and three V three? And it's like, well, there's one format that's really multiplayer and it's, um, it's UPF and it's almost more fun to think of it as a social thing. Like yeah. instead of just being like, you know, when we play our games, it's like, you know, it could be technically the optimal play to only attack the person on your right. But it's like, then you're just kind of wasting time. It's like, okay, well, why are we here? This doesn't feel like, you know, I want everybody to do the thing that their deck is supposed to do. Like I, I want <laughs> my friends to be able to have fun with this thing that they created that lives outside of the competitive structure. Like, I don't know. Like it, it may be just that I, I'm like, yeah, maybe you guys just don't need to be as sweaty. But I think that UPF is just a great format for that. It really, yeah. it allows you to have those like, yeah, am I playing optimally? No, but like, we're just hanging out. We're just having fun and enjoying this game that we like. So, it's, yeah, um, it's, it's a nice departure from having to like care about optimal sequencing and stuff. <laughs> yeah, unless you have a ridiculously wide Azalea turn and unfortunately Bill sat on your right. <laughs> yeah and then you die um and then you die but, yeah but you know i mean oh. stuff like that can happen but it's one of those formats where i'm like uh, my motto is like who cares it's fun like exactly, yeah, yeah like someone could be like why are you playing that in your deck and my response would be like who cares it's fun because i, I want to i always <laughs> yeah. put i always put go bananas in every single upf deck is it like sometimes do i do go bananas and literally do nothing yes that happened last time. I played Go Bananas. I called Gorgonian Tome. I did not get a Gorgonian Tome. I got nothing. Well, I didn't get nothing. I got a Tunic and a Shiana, but I didn't get anything in my hand. <laughs> yeah, but you didn't get anything for that game, so... <laughs> yeah, so like, it's literally a card that I, that did nothing, but who cares? It was fun. Like, so that that's like my motto for, for this kind of stuff, and that's actually my motto for, for uh, Commander to some degree when I play Commander, because I, I don't play competitive yeah. Commander like, like game nights with, with, with yeah. uh, friends. Yeah. Um, Competitive commander is different. That that's a whole other thing. But, um, yeah, who cares? It's fun. I think, I think that's 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 my motto for it. Um, I I hope LGSs host like UPF nights more often. Uh, that would be my suggestion to a lot of LGS out, LGSs out there who are like, oh, we have low armory attendance or we have low skirmish turnouts or whatever. Try hosting like a UPF or commoner night. I think those would be. <laughs> fantastic commoner because it is fun it can be very competitive but the barrier of entry is like ten dollars like like yeah. it's like almost it's, it's nothing like to make it down. on the ground the barrier is so low yeah um, um so like people can come and they can be competitive but they don't have to have three command and conquers three enlightened strikes vandal spring tunic all that kind of stuff that people um, no. talk about being expensive so you mm -hmm. can play commoner and have fun um and I, I would also like LGS to be able to do this with, with proper support from L, uh, LSS. So like an, an ideal in an ideal world for me, this is looking to 2023 20, and beyond. I would love for LGSs to be able to be like, okay, tonight is UPF night. And here is our pricing. Literally everyone who plays gets this. You all get this mm -hmm. promo card, no matter what. 
So like, yeah. it doesn't matter who wins. That's not the point of this. So the point is to have fun with the community, the fun with like fun with friends and flesh and blood. So like, I don't think UPF events should have winner based prizing or at the very least oh, no. i don't think it should have winner based exclusive prizing maybe the winner gets like a bonus thing maybe they get like a i don't know some booster packs or something i don't know but like yeah. like i think it should be like a game night and then like everyone just gets the promo like everyone gets the the, the foil you know hero or whatever the hell the promo is yeah I think um, I think December is a, a fantastic time to do that sort of thing because uh, I mean the the prize kits even are just the shitty Christmas presents if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. like it, the there's oh there's just a ton of those to give out and there isn't really a thing to shoot for. There's not not like a you know a, an exclusive cold foil. So it's like I don't know we could just have fun while we have sort of like an off month for for like competitive stuff and whatever and that's not necessarily a bad thing it's it's good to have that break to not burn out yeah. um but yeah this that's is a, why a they're promoting it as well isn't it it's why they're promoting mm -hmm. it as well it's just like this is the season to be jolly you know yeah blah, just blah, play blah, with blah. your friends you can play this game you can play this game you know this way rather than just 1v1 cutthroat yeah. combat you can also well, play the game like this i mean <laughs> yeah and, and just like logistically speaking i honestly think that's how that's how flesh and blood really grows like as mm -hmm. a game at like as a community i think leaning more into stuff like ultimate pit fight i think that's really how flesh and blood will will truly get a lot of growth because i think yeah. you know at, at some point you're going to reach the cap of the competitive players who are willing to give it a shot and i think a lot of competitive players already are like either dropping magic or playing magic alongside Flesh and Blood or other games or whatever. Like a lot of yeah. competitive players are already like looking at Flesh and Blood. What you really need is you need everyone else. Um, the people yeah. who are going to just casually buy packs, who'll have their one pet deck and they'll play it in Ultimate Pit Fight. You know, like doesn't need to be the, fine, the most finely tuned deck for the competitive meta or whatever. They love whatever hero you know kasai or, or whatever and they have their they have their deck and that's really where i think flesh and blood will will boom and shine and i think 2023 is has the potential for that and if lss mm -hmm. keeps up with the the upf um you know pushing it and promoting it i think it'll help because i think one of the problems is not a lot of people even know it exists outside of folks yeah. who watch like our stuff and even then, there's still some folks I know who are regulars on my channel who don't know all that much about Ultimate Pit Fight, even though I yeah, I do it like it, once a month. And it's yeah. it's just a, something that doesn't get a lot of like tra not necessarily traction. It doesn't get a lot of advertisement. Um, yeah, and like I, I think that uh, it could be a much wider played thing. Like I haven't even played it with anybody outside of you guys and uh, with my new group of friends that uh well my my new group of flesh and blood <laughs> friends um <laughs> that when they were asking about that like are there social formats i'm like we should play that <laughs> like, should. Why, why have i not done this <laughs> yeah it's so much fun it's so much and that, that like that's like the, the big thing too it's like just a ton of fun it's like the most fun that i have playing flesh and blood team events are also really fun too but um yes you should play Ultimate pit fight. If you have at least a group of three people, you can play with three people. Uh, four, I think, is the ideal number for me personally. Um, five, five is pretty good too. Like three to five, you can play ultimate mm -hmm. pit fight. If you want to get crazy, you can go more. Um, but if you have six people, just do two two pods of three. Um, it could be just a, a ton of fun. Um, so yeah. I, I highly recommend it. It's a format where you can play Sun Kiss and Moon Wish, and it'll be like fun and good. And <laughs> You play Gorgonian Tome, and it's like you can draw like three, four cards off a of Gorgonian Tome. Like, oh, it's yeah. it, it's so much fun. Um, it's a it's a format where where uh, defense reaction Azalea has won, as has won. Like, like uh, the react one. Azalea. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> if you watch Guardian Azalea, I don't want to spoil too much, but if you watch, I would say in the last three UPF live streams that I've done. As has won with Azalea trap trap Azalea. So go watch. I'm not gonna tell you which one it is. Yeah, but go, go, go <laughs> it watch. It does work, and it doesn't it spoil. Hard. It doesn't spoil anything because As plays Azalea every time, so you can't you can't be exactly. Like, yes, yeah, so you have to watch all of them to yeah. find out which one it is. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, 
But yeah, so I... Yeah. I uh, oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, yeah, so that, that, another thing, obviously, as well, is um, obviously people people get into this game, I did, for instance, because you like a certain character that's on the lore page. You know, you, yeah. what, you, go, to the, you go to the website, you're like, oh, yeah, Viserai, oh, yeah, Azalea, they, they look emo, they look, you know, dark and dingy. <laughs> I, can, I, I like relate. those characters, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah, you 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 connect to a certain character is uh, is a lot of people's way into it because it is a hero centric game. That's what they advertise it to be a hero centric game. Um, but um, in the competitive in the competitive meta, that hero that you're that you are doesn't you can't really take that hero to success most of the time because you have to play certain heroes that are in the meta. Yeah, which is a bit of a yeah. a bit of a, a bit of a shame. You, you, it's not it's not balanced in that way. Unfortunately, it's not balanced in that way where every hero has a chance against every 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 other hero. There is yeah. still going to be strictly better, you know, matchups and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So what I was getting at was is um, obviously UPF is a is a great way to uh, like gang up on the you know the the, the meta <laughs> deck or yeah. gang up on the dromai, you know, and teach them a lesson or two. So, so um, Ultimate Pit Fight has no ban list, by the way. Unless you, if you're exactly. completely new to it, there's no ban list, so you can play whatever you want. You can be busted chain, no ban list, That's right? If you want, but if you do, you have two people to the sides of you who are like, "What are you doing? Like, what yeah. are you doing, mate? What yeah. are you doing there, chain? Like." You can only block yeah, so like, many attacks, buddy. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I was, like yeah. I was saying, like, yeah, it doesn't feel great to to you know focus one person, but if they're absolutely going off, then yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just like it's a self correcting sort of thing yeah. where is. you know if you're doing yeah. something that's maybe I mean I wouldn't even say that bringing high power chain to um, to you know, like a UPF game. I don't think that's a social faux pas. Or oh, no, anything. no, no. But uh, if you do, clear, you will get focused. <laughs> like, I want to do that. Like, yeah, I literally want to yeah. build, uh, I'm calling it heel chain. Like, it's it's on my list. I'm going to build, I'm yeah, going like, to build heel chain. And it literally has H-E-L. every <laughs> band, yeah, every like band card. It's going to have Drone of Brutality, Seeds of Agony, Dusk Blade. It's just going to no, be <laughs> as gross as possible. And I, I'm gonna be the heel, and like that's the idea. Like, I'm yeah. chain. Come at me. Like, come at me. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah I, I do kind of like that about about UPF. Is that again? It's kind of like socially self correcting. Um, yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> yeah. When you see yeah. someone rock up and they reveal Dusk Blade, you're like, what are you, what are you doing there, buddy? Like, you you you're, you're, you're not <laughs> doing anything fun there you're doing yeah. strong things what are, you, what are you doing that dust plate <laughs> huh yeah like <laughs> uh, if you're running dread scythe i'd be like okay that's sweet if you're running yeah, dust blade i'm like hmm i yeah. could attack genus what you need over there or i also could attack dusk blade chain um probably yeah, gonna attack, exactly. I'm probably gonna attack chain <laughs> um, that's the sort of uh, question that feels like it has a pretty easy solution yeah yeah, yeah. um but, but, uh, but you can you can even get you know rune blades that rock up with the anals of Sutcliffe now as well. Yes, nice. you could. <laughs> That's you uh, can, you why, can why have reading a book in the club. You <laughs> can, yeah, you can have both anals of Sutcliffe and Sutcliffe's yeah. head in the same deck. Yeah, yeah, so it's like but, a, it's those, those are all words that pertain to Sutcliffe. Assemble the pieces. Yeah, well, and yeah. his and his uh, suede hides. Yeah, you can get his suede hides too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, while while you're reading his research notes, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I just really, I just really want to be him. Just really want to uh, be. Really but, be um, but yeah, something that as said, I think really resonates with me on this, uh, on this just for UPF in general, where it's like, what what I actually said to one of my friends when uh, it was my friend that was like, when you guys were talking about flesh and blood, it sounded like a good time. Um, he was like, who do you like recommend? Who should I play? Yeah. Um, and I was like, okay, so little bit of homework. And I sent him the heroes page of the official fab TCG website. Mm, and yeah. very specifically, I said, which of these heroes makes your Kokoro go doki doki? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and, yeah, uh, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, you look at them and you're just like, I think Benji looks cool. And you're like, yeah, we'll build you a Benji mm. deck. Like that's, I think the most authentic way to get into this game is oh, to just look. 100%. Cause all the heroes have so much personality. Like they have 
they're they're very well designed in that way um and yeah. just looking at them kind of gives you an idea of what kind of deck they are honestly <laughs> like that. and that's that's something that is very impressive um that's that's really good design language to look at azalea and be like oh yeah so she's gonna be like you know long range uh <laughs> <laughs> he's like yeah yeah you hear that you already say yeah i mean, or, so, I mean, I mean come on like like here let's just turn this around <laughs> look at his 4g experience yeah. look at oh yeah <laughs> the full the like eight foot tall poster <laughs> yeah. of lexi uh, this is a. I know it's uh, not actually eight feet tall, but this is a <laughs> this is a limited canvas print by Federico Musetti, uh, signed Ugh. and numbered. This is two out of ten. Um, is that above your bed? Is that above your bed, Kel? Like this is, on your this ceiling? Is not my, this is not my bed. <laughs> this is not my bed. Yeah, all right. bed. <laughs> this, not is this is my studio. So for the it's the, one of those <laughs> situations where he has like a bunk bed, so he's only this far away from the ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> Th Lovely, different, yeah. different room. I do have flesh and blood art in in our bedroom that my my girlfriend oh, yeah. consented to, um, and that's because they don't they don't look like crazy <laughs> fantasy art. It's a uh, sun kiss, moon wish, and eclipse. Uh, oh are yeah, in, are in uh, those yeah, are good. Options. Those are good options. I like that. Um, it kind of fits the theme that she has going on anyway. It's like a celestial. Just gonna room. just gonna say as well. Um, for anyone who's listening to this audio version, there is such an incentive to listen to the to, yeah. to look at the video version. <laughs> yeah. So what what Today. I did is I, I I turned my camera around. I'm in my studio. Turn the camera around. Yeah. And I have this massive. It's probably like four feet or more than that. It's it's pretty big. It's big. Um, <laughs> canvas Lexi that I have framed up in front of my desk or my table here in the studio. Um, so you 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 only see the, the this display, but there's currently like a long desk here with like chairs and a bunch of flesh and blood stuff anyway yeah but the point is i did yeah. that because like mm -hmm. it's it's great to just find some characters that you like and then just play those characters it doesn't matter if they're good or not yeah. like lexi's all right like she's she's all right she's not a like a s tier character but she's okay mm -hmm. like and she has times where she's better than others like she won canadian nationals last year and she also went nine and oh recently at a battle harden but also, mm -hmm. she wasn't a character that saw almost any play at Worlds, right? Like, almost no one. There's a couple people, but... Um, yeah, it's the... Uh, I mean, it's just the consistency issue that yeah. is kind that kind of... I don't want to say wrecks certain heroes, but kind of along those lines, because yeah. and, the yeah. more consistent heroes will always be the ones that see more play. Probably, um, yeah, for sure. That's just a, a, fa a facet of any card game, really. Yeah, um, any any strategy that's more consistent is going to be more popular because it'll win more. But in specifically Flesh and Blood, it feels like it sucks because you, if you like this hero, like, say, I don't want to keep, like, punching down, but Leviah, she's the, the poster child of that, where it's like, if you have a stumble turn, there are so many decks that can have a stumble turn and not, like, just lose the game, but Le Le Leviah does that. Like, if she stumbles, she loses 10 life. That yeah, kills herself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. Ridiculous. Um, yeah. So, and, like, and, and, yeah, like, there are so many people that like those heroes, and just having an ability to play them is so important. So, yeah. My, yeah. Like, my, two yeah. Fa <laughs> my two favorite heroes in the game... Currently, I really like Azalea, but she's probably in the top five. Um, Lexi and Arachne are my two favorite heroes right now to play. Mm -hmm. I love them both. And I have like mm -hmm. super decked out, like fancy versions of them here. They're my favorite decks. My Arachne deck, uh, it's like Arachne Blitz plus like seven other cards to make it into UPF. And I'll just swap the cards out. All foil, 100% mm -hmm. foil. Like I love this deck so much. Every, literally every card is foil. All the Command and Conquerors, all the E Strikes. I have cold foils of everything except for Arachne, who I doesn't have a cold foil yet. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't have the cold foil Null Rune. Um, mm -hmm. And then almost true for Lexi as well. But my point is, is like, neither of these are like meta decks, right? Like, I just really love them. Especially Arachne is like currently yeah. not that great. He's like solidly like B tier or something like that. But like, I don't care. Like, I don't care. I just want to play yeah. with these these heroes and these decks that I really like. Um, and you pimp them all out as well. It's just like same same yeah. with me. I've yeah. got an Azalea, I've got an Azalea deck, and I bought, well, I didn't buy it, but I traded bit, literally my whole folder for the German Marvel version just because yeah. I like the hero. Yeah, like so. Yeah, and that's when such a good pickup. When there's that's a Marvel sad. version of Lexi, I'm probably gonna cash out for a Marvel exactly. version of Lexi, even though I have a mm. artist artist proof sketch. 
which I normally mm-hmm. use as yeah. my Lexan, use my artist proof sketch. I also have a foil, yeah. a foil signed by Federico that I use as well. But um, I'll add another yeah. one. I'll add the Marvel one to my collection. I'll have three, I just, I three love, fancy Lexans. I love how easy it is in this game to like latch onto a hero and just have them be like what you really care about in the game. Like it just, yeah. it, I don't yeah. know. It, it works for me because. I mean, right now, the hero that I love the most is Prism, but it's kind of like just by necessity. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh-huh. I, do, I don't care that she's a light hero. Um, in fact, I would be totally fine if she was just a regular illusionist, uh, except uh, Luminaris. Luminaris is my favorite hero in the game. That, Luminaris? That's the uh, Luminaris is cool. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I, I also really like Prism, too. I mean, I have a you can't see because yeah. it's all white, whited out, but I do have a hand drawn Prism by Livia Prima. Ugh. Um so such cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, I love I love this kind of stuff. But uh, yeah. yeah, that I agree. <laughs> Long story short, yeah, I yeah. agree. Um, <laughs> Flesh and Blood. Twenty twenty three as well. Twenty twenty three as well. Obviously, is uh, is going to be the year of also PVE. So yes. it just uh, yeah, allows yeah. allows pe- allows people to form a party of their aforementioned favorite heroes to go up against a system or a overlord like one of your friends being the master or however however they choose to do it you know there are loads of systems out there and game designs out there that will allow you to play against a system or overlord so they can they got loads of options to do that but there's um a really cool one in this dice based game called dice throne there's a um Mm. like a co-op campaign mode where you actually go around on a map and you kind of like level up and get equipment and stuff and I, mm-hmm. fingers crossed, I hope it's similar to that. And it, the wording so far made it sound similar to that because I think they literally use the word like campaign. Um, so you have, maybe you fight a sequence of enemies, maybe randomly in a dungeon or something. You get items. Like you literally equip the items. Um, I hope they're like cool, like flashy, overpowered items only for the, the PvE mode. Um, mm-hmm. And then you fight yeah. like a big overpowered dumb boss at the end, like a big old <laughs> dragon or demon or something. Like there are those things we've oh. seen in some of the art, those massive looming monsters that are just kind of like over uh, yeah. like Solana and stuff. Like imagine like teaming up to fight something like that. Like it's got, it's got um, like 500 health or something like, Oh, I'm it's... so pumped. <laughs> I'm, I'm so pumped for PVE. I think it's going to be such a good time, and I really, I really want to play support genus. Like, yeah, it's so bad. Yeah, like, dude. support genus. Yeah, I. This is a uh, slight, slightly shameless, but also not. Uh, one of the times I was talking to James, uh, James White, and Worlds was at a dinner, and I was like, I was like, I know you can't tell me anything about PVE, James, but if you ever want like someone to help promote it or do anything, just let me know. <laughs> I I, yeah. I want to do stuff with this. I I'm very enthusiastic about it. Very very excited for it. And yeah, so we'll see. We'll see. I would yeah. love to do. It's... My my dream would be be able to like showcase it for everyone to get everyone excited for it. For them to be like, here's a preview version of it. Invite your friends and then make a video. And I'd be like, hell yes. And then. Mm. My my favorite part oh. right now is that I have no expectations for what it's going to be, and I'm still just really excited. <laughs> I yeah, <laughs> I have some expectations, but they're they're very they're, they're widely varied, and I'd be happy with all of them. So like, mm-hmm. I have like the big one where I'm like a, a campaign with items and that kind of stuff. Like that would be like the the pinnacle for me. I think it'd be so much fun. Um, but it could also be like a very fight the boss kind of situation. Like uh, some of the old WoW raid decks for the WoW TCG, where you just like fight Anixia. Like there's an I I have it. I have the Anixia's layer raid deck where you just fight Anixia, um, and she's just like a big, big dragon that does big dragon mm. things. Um, so like I think that would be like the base level for me, and then scales all the way up to like a a, a campaign with like a board, like a oh it's, it's so cool. There's so many possibilities here because. It's also a way to expand upon the lore and showcase more of the world. Like imagine, imagine it's like a pits themed one because we have, we have the pits coming up. Imagine it's a pits themed one, and you're taking bounties from Blackjack's bounty board, mm. and like you do that, and then maybe it's 
Oh, this is this is getting crazy. Maybe it's like Arkham or like uh, Betrayal at House on the Hill, where you have a ran- you have a tiles, you have tiles, and then that would be cool. You go, you have random tiles every time you move to a new spot, and then when, once you hit X tile, that has like the, your target, your mark, or whatever. Um, uh, this is a lot. Yeah. Uh, this is this is a little off the off the track, but th- that's the possibilities that PVE PVE has. And I'm seeing more and more people who are like, I want PVE, which is, um, it's good. I think a lot of people are excited for it. I, I also yeah. think, and this is like the negative part, I also think a lot of people m- might be getting their hopes up. Um, I, I, mm-hmm. hope, I hope LSS can deliver. And I'm going to include me a little bit on that too, because I'm so stoked for it. I think they will though. I think they will deliver. Um, mm. But it's... It could be huge for the game. Let's put it that way. It could be one of these moments where the game like absolutely explodes. Where people are like, hey, you know the Flesh and Blood game? Like they have this like co-op mode that you can just play. Kind of like Dungeons and Dragons. You want to give it a shot? Like, whereas someone might be like, hey, there's this new competitive card game, Flesh and Blood. It's like, you know, really good for competitive players. I, have, I know some people would be like, ugh. Like, I don't want to play... <laughs> I don't want to play that is like stressful and I don't want to spend the money on all the competitive stuff. But if someone's just like, you can just play with friends. It's like a board game. Like, yeah, I know so many people who'd be like, yeah, I'll try it. Like, that's how I get my yeah, partner Robin to play with me. Like I even told her, I'm like, would you be more interested in playing this with me? You don't have to fight against me. We would play as a team. And she's like, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cooperative board games and cooperative games in general are just a massive. They 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 call cooperative board games in the board game space. I listen to a load of it, and I, mm-hmm. I used to I used to board 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 games was used to be my thing before I discovered like Commander and like huh. obviously now Flesh and Blood and stuff. Board games used to be used to be my thing, but they're in the, in that space they call it a gateway game. Um, mm-hmm. Is to is to get non gamers into gaming, and the best way to do it is to play a game where you're all playing together yeah. because obviously someone can essentially handhold you through the experience and tell you oh do this if yep. you do this we can help you do this or whatever you know you're not slitting someone's throat from the off and that can be off-putting to get someone into a new game is just kicking their ass so you know having yeah. a gateway game in flesh and blood form is just going to be an absolute slam dunk probably more so than upf um but um but yeah it's going to be it's going to be fun it's going to be awesome I, it's going to be awesome. I absolutely I, respect the amount of time that they're putting into doing this because if they do it right, it could be an, like beyond a game changer. Like this could be, yeah. this could far reach like a lot. Um, um, and it's going to be sick. Seg, sort of. Seg, we, we, we've already been talking for like an hour, but like sort of segueing into what we personally want to do for Flesh and Blood and for content and all that kind of stuff next year. I think it's a good segue because. I want to continue to do more Ultimate Pit Fight content. Like, that's something that I plan on doing. I still, I plan on trying to maintain the the one stream per week. Um, it'll mostly be Flesh and Blood. I, I want to say like 90% of the time it'll be Flesh and Blood. And I want to have at least one of those UPF a week. If we get PvE in the mix, I also want to make PvE content on live stream. Absolutely, yeah. If it's possible. If it's possible. It depends on how they do it, right? But um, I want to do PvE obviously um my one of my big hopes and this is something i've been thinking about a lot is i would love to invite my my friends obviously the living legends here as, as in bill but maybe some other friends too like ian and uh, steven de um to do like some fun pve stuff various types of videos maybe maybe highly edited videos maybe live streams i might um try to edit one myself depends on how things are going but uh that's one of my big goals for next year. Yeah. So it depends on when PVE comes out. That's something that I, I've been thinking about a lot that I really want to do. Not just because I think it'll help my channel. I do think I do think it would. But also because um, I think it's a lot of fun. And I just want to have fun with my friends and make cool content that I think people are going to like. So um, yeah. that's I think something. LSS are probably going to... Well, they, they, they will probably never expect content creators to jump on it but there will be multiple creators that will do pve stuff there's it's just gonna it's just gonna be all the rage um it'll be be really interesting because 
Mm. Outside of me, well, actually, I was going to say outside of me and DM Armada, but DM Armada does a lot of meta content, like like content for like tournament players. I really don't. Yeah. Like, I think I'm one of the only bigger channels that actually doesn't talk about like, this is the meta breakdown, meta tier list, you know? Top tier, <laughs> top tier Phi deck, top tier, you know, Kano deck. Like, I don't do that content. Um, and top tier splashy thumbnail with with, yeah, with exactly. title that draws you in. Well, not just that. Yeah. It's like title that vaguely, <laughs> vaguely assures you that you'll your your win percentage will go up if you watch this video, kind of thing. Pretty much, yeah. Where like, yeah. I don't make <laughs> content like that. Um, so like. It'll be very interesting to see which channels try to do like the more casual social type stuff and which ones just stick to their hardcore competitive things. N next year is going to be super interesting for that kind of stuff. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Obviously. That's I, I mean, yeah, the, pe the okay. people that are positioned in a social or casual space are obviously the ones to pick it up, aren't they? But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if other if other channels do pick it up because it's completely different, or it will be completely different experience entirely. So we're probably going to see new channels stuff and and other people enter the space because of it, which is going to be even better as well. If we see more people coming in as a result of this directly, then um, then yeah, it's just going to be it's just going to be good fun. Yeah. So that that is something that. Uh... It's been on my mind that I'm definitely planning on uh, doing next oh, yes. year, like specifically UPF, uh, PVE. Um, continue to do some. I want to do some more commoner stuff. Um, the, and then like my regular suite of content. Obviously, I have goals. Like it's it's good to set goals. Uh, I think it's always really good to set something to work towards, rather than just be oh, yeah. kind of kind of listless. So this year for me, it was it was fifteen thousand subs. I'm pretty close. I don't think I'll get there. Uh, but I think it'll be close. I'm like 14.5 right now. Um, and next year, I want to set a goal of like 20, 20,000 uh, is my goal for next year, um, which yeah. I think is also attainable. And um, like Especially with the new products <laughs> coming out. It, you know, is, yeah. if you're going to do content on the new stuff as well, it's just going to be, uh, it's going to be a good growth year for, uh, for I think of everybody, flesh and, flesh and blood who's involved with it is going to, it's going to see a big hike again, I think. With yeah. all the new stuff coming out. Yeah, I mean, the last month, I've had the most growth that I've ever had on YouTube. Exactly. And that's, that's because yeah. Flesh and Blood just kind of started to pick up in popularity. It's slowed down a bit, but it always slows mm. down at the end of the year. Um, yeah. And I think next year could be another, like, really, really good growth. Um, let's see. Other than that, personally, um, before I stop talking for a little bit and let you guys, <laughs> let you guys talk, um, <laughs> I have some other fun things. Well, I think I, I think they're fun. Plan for next year. Um, I, I will try to talk just about the flesh and blood ones, though, because I do have some cool stuff with Grand Archive coming up next year. Obviously, I have my card that's gonna my collaboration card that's gonna be in their first set. Um, I've commissioned my friend uh, and just fantastic artist Han or Han Chu. She does art for Grand Archive. Mm. Uh, commissioned her to make a really cool Grand Archive themed playmat with my characters, but they're also in the Grand Archive world. It looks really nice. It looks really cool. Um, yeah, and then uh, I've recently started talking to Crobius again, another artist friend, but this time a flesh and blood artist, and we are designing a new assassin character for my my suite of I don't know what you would call them, right? Red Zone Rogue Fantasy World characters that are loosely in the flesh and blood world, um, and so that should be coming up in February, and due to the price of these commissions, are really expensive. Um, but I'm happy to support the artists. I probably will only be doing like one or two more in the year. And I say this all because uh, I want to I want to focus more on my favorite game next year in general, which is Flesh and Blood. So probably a slightly more focus on Flesh and Blood, but still covering other things occasionally. Um, and because of that, probably not too many non-Flesh and Blood themed commissions and that kind of stuff. I have an idea for another one later in the year, commissioning another Flesh and Blood artist that I... That, that's great, uh, Sylvia. Um, so, yeah. So that that's kind of like loosely what I have in mind for the channel. Uh, obviously, I have a lot more that I'm thinking about too, but that's kind of like the general general plan. Like, 
things that I want to make, uh, content that I want to focus on. I want to focus a lot on the social stuff. Um, yeah. And personally, I'd also like to do some coverage at some events again. That'd be great. Uh, talk, yeah. to, talk to some folks from LSS at Worlds, and they literally said they'd like to get me back in the booth, so I would like to be back in the booth and do that stuff. Uh, it's a great way for me to actually go to an event and be able to afford it because it's also yeah. very expensive. Be able to offset it at least a little bit. <laughs> and then that segues into my final thing that I think relates to to you guys, both the listeners, viewers, and as in Bill, and that is the events that I want to go to. Uh, we talked about this a little bit last yeah. year, but I would love to go. I could probably only afford to get to like two on my own diet, to be fair. Like mm-hmm. may, maybe two. It'll be tough. Um, I want to go to Worlds again. Worlds was like awesome. Like it was so much fun. And I also want to go to world premiere events if they have them. So mm-hmm. my hope is that this is like the, the, the selfish hope. World premiere event, Uprising, or uh, Outsiders. World premiere, world premiere event slash Worlds for the, for the other set. Because they're, they're both <laughs> at the end of the year. So hopefully they do the, the, the same time. I don't know if they would. They probably wouldn't actually because, because Worlds probably has the limited format for that set. But still. Still. Mm, yeah. That's probably where I'm at as well. Like, I think that world is going to be a pretty important one for me to to hit up. Yeah. Um, but also, uh, I want to chase. I want to chase that high of being the first person to pull the fabled from it's, the new sex. It's, it's so much fun, <laughs> man! It's so much fun. Um, so world premiere is going to be a pretty good one too. That one's coming up soon. Yeah. If if we have it, It'll probably in the next you know mm-hmm. five months or whatever. So mm. less than yeah, that actually. I'm, I'm saving up my uh, my vacation time and spending it wisely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Same here. Yeah. Yeah. So I, th- I think I think we I think we can I think we can kind of kind of say that if there is an Outsiders world premiere that we will probably all be there for it um, because yeah. it's g- going to be fairly imminent. So you know it's start mm-hmm. of the year. So for people working in offices, we can sort of have our holiday allocations. Um, within the first three months, we, we can we can save something at least for that quite imminently. Yep. Um, so uh, so yeah, I reckon I reckon I reckon we could do like a little soft pledge that we'll, we'd we'd all be able to get to the Outsiders premiere. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. I will say that there's a very good. I never want to say 100 percent until I've actually bought all the shit for it. No, I, I mean stuff. Yeah, <laughs> um, but there's a very very good chance that I go to Outsiders world premiere event if it happens. Like. Pretty yeah. good, pretty good chance. Um, I need yeah. to go to these at some point. So, <laughs> Might as well yeah. Start now. Yeah. yeah. My 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 hope is that Jim, uh, from Fab TCG Cards goes and uh, he can book book our rooms like he normally does. He always books. Good <laughs> I'm gonna rooms. Start... He always books. Good I, rooms. I reckon we should. I reckon we should. Uh, oh, I could just have a word with him and just say, right, Jim. You know, me and Bill are probably going to go as well. Can you sort us all out, and we'll just pay you when we can, sort of thing. Yeah. So, um, I guess this is just like a too, maybe maybe a little too insider baseball, but for all all of the uh, <laughs> events that I go to, Jim basically books the rooms for us. Like he just books them, and then I'm just like, all right, Jim, where where are we? And he just sends me the information, um, and then I just pay him. We, yeah. We, we we he doesn't pay for them. Yeah. We. Uh, we all pay him after the event's done. Um, yeah, it's, it's really mean, yeah, he, tra- he tra- travels a lot for work, doesn't he? So he gets like yeah. loads of like hol- hol- uh, hotel benefits and stuff. Yeah, so. he has like frequent flyer um, points and all this kind of stuff. That's and, it. And he yeah. just is very knowledgeable and always books like really good places. So, uh, like yeah, like for Worlds, it's it was like really nice good. place, like right by the the venue. Yeah, it's it's good to have somebody who sort of knows how to navigate that. Like, I'm okay at figuring out like travel stuff, but I'm not. you know, if somebody's if somebody's willing to do all of that, you know, the coordination and figuring out what place is good and like um, all all of that actual figuring out stuff, like I would gladly pay for that service. <laughs> yeah, like oh, absolutely. Yeah. For example, like at Worlds, um, he booked. Like, so it was uh, me, um, Jim, uh, Steven, Diamramata, and uh, Ian Kenderdine were all kind of, like, booked us in rooms right next to each other. So it was, like, me and Ian in one room and Steven and Jim in the other. And there was, like, a 
divider thing so we could just open up the dividing so it felt like one big room for four people oh yeah um so that's what we did for worlds <laughs> um and so for other events it would be cool so i hope, I hope jim goes too because then we'll oh, yeah, be like yeah. jim please book us some cool rooms um yeah. and it's just fun it's just fun to you know be around all you know your friends and stuff yeah. see everybody yeah rather yeah. rather than uh rather than staying at the flamingo hotel which was basically like a 25 minute walk away from the venue yeah and was... what i had to do was, was get a, was get an electric scooter to and from my to and from my hotel to the venue every day which was fun the first the first day or so it was like oh yeah going around san jose on the scooter like loving life and then <laughs> yeah. And then when when you're fucking pissed at like two a.m. in the morning trying to get back <laughs> on your on, on your scooter and you get you get lost in a, in an American neighborhood, you're like, oh, where am I? <laughs> yeah. Like the 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 average journey on on the scooter was like literally five minutes from uh, from the hotel to the venue. But on the last night, my last journey clocked in at thirty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, I was oh. <laughs> It was ridiculous. I don't know where I was. Grit on a, yeah. on a wheelie yeah. board. Literally, I was a liability <laughs> that night. Oh god! Yeah, if I got stopped by the cops, yeah, yeah. Maybe that's maybe that's yeah. A bit incriminating um, information on the Living Legends podcast, but never mind. Nah, you're not. Oh, even, they won't be able to find you now. You're not even a U.S. No. citizen. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Or am I? You know, who knows. Yeah. Oh, God, he's too good at that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I try to do the opposite. Hello, Governor. Hello. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can only do like the 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 terrible like Cockney. I can't do like a normal British. It's all. It's always hello. just like hello. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. Lovely old Justin. <laughs> that, one, that one's okay. Uh, I have some precedent from as for that one. Lovely old job. Yeah, lovely old job. I can't do it. Oh, uh, I can't. I try, but it doesn't sound. It doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good. So I'm not gonna. Lovely. Gonna... Well, it just lovely sounds. It just sounds normal. It just says lovely, job. or it sounds like really bad and forced. You just have to pretend that Lo- you're lovely. that you're Michael Caine. Lovely. M- Michael That's it. Caine. Yeah, lovely. Mo- lovely. Michael, Michael Caine. Yeah. <laughs> L- lovely. I can't do it, man. It sounds too much. It sounds too much. <laughs> uh, anyway. Wow. Well. Anyway. Yeah. Oh well. <laughs> That's real. This will be this will well, be, a, this will be a quick podcast. It'll be an hour long. An hour and a half later. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> Doing it's, stupid accents. It's funny because yeah. it's longer because it's less structured and it's just more just random random garbage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, yeah. how about you, Bill? What What are you thinking for next year for the good um, old Spike Feeders Fab? I know you said you had some plans and stuff. Yeah, so uh, I am still working on um, getting us ready for the uh, the resurgence, the the reintroduction of the Goliath Gauntlet. The and uh, like I said, it basically just revolves around um, I I felt the need to build new decks every time. So mm-hmm. like, uh, so I'd be like, oh, Elliot, do you want to be on a on a thing and he's like yeah i have this i have this deck and to his credit he did also have a few other decks um so i didn't have to do it exclusively myself every time but like if we had jan on he has like his one deck he doesn't really buy all that much product he has like you know a a wife and kids and stuff and like a real adult situation where he doesn't have infinite disposable income like i do so it's like okay well you have your deck you'll play that (laughs) you're comfortable with that that's fine and then um, to get a gauntlet of five decks, I would just put together all of the decks myself. And yeah. it just takes a while, <laughs> like just to find yeah. like what decks I want find to them, play. Sleeve them. And just sleeve them up. Many for, hours. Like, yeah. Make sure that it's all good. And then, yeah, it just ended up being so much extra work that I was just like, I, I can't do this. <laughs> I'm just I just don't have the 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 mental capacity so we're going to be changing it to uh we will have like a a dynamic deck for whoever the challenger of the gauntlet is whoever wants to go through the actual the trials um they'll be whoever they want to be and then the gauntlet is going to be like kind of just a set of five decks that represent as best as i can get them different play styles so it'll be like this one is more of a slower control deck this one is an aggro deck this one is more of a mid-range strategy and like sort of stuff like that to keep it um keep it more of like a a representation of actually trying out you know how flexible this deck is it like are there weaknesses or there whatever 
Um, so, and for that, I'm just going to have five different decks that I'll update like every now and then, and maybe like, you know, as new heroes come out, I'll swap out a deck from it. Um, and I'll make like incremental upgrades, but it'll just be, these are the five decks for the gauntlet so that I don't have to worry about that. We just have to worry about who's going to be playing in it. And, uh, and yeah, so that will make things just a little bit easier on, on my end specifically. And uh, hopefully then we'll be able to get back into weekly or semi-weekly um, videos, probably weekly, because, I mean, we can film all five of them in a day if there's no um, if there's no actual like setup that needs to be done. So, nice. um, yeah, anyway, so there were I think there were a few people that have been asking me about that. Uh, specifically, my, my friend Kaylee messaged me a little while ago and asked like oh like what what part of um the goliath gauntlet did you find unsustainable and i didn't respond to it and it's not because I'm, i was ignoring her and again she she listens to this podcast so kaylee i wasn't ignoring you i just didn't really have like a super solid answer and i was just still kind of just piece it together i know i had this idea for a while but i i almost didn't want to like address it for some reason i don't know that's very it's it's very self-centered of me to do that but you know that's just kind of how how i felt so um yeah so that's like my big project we're going to be filming some amount on i believe the 27th yeah the tuesday after christmas nice. um we're going to have a, a filming day for goliath gauntlet stuff so it's coming up fast nice. gotta get those those decks ready nice. um and yeah, the other the other thing for the new year that I really want to do is I kind of fell off the wagon in terms of actually going to events. And that makes me feel kind of bad um, because like I, I really like our local community and I was doing a yeah. lot of, you know, like onboarding people and, you know, the welcome wagon. And I liked that. I really liked seeing the new people come in and. You know, I play against somebody who has just like the Lexi precon or whatever. I have a good time. I'm playing my deck and like I, I don't hold back, but I do like tell them, you know, like um, like I, I give them a chance to take back plays if they are doing something that they just fundamentally misunderstand, which just happens in this game. And yeah. uh, I remember there was one guy who, yeah, he was playing a Lexi precon and he was really, really excited about it. And so I was like, yeah, that's awesome. And I just like after the game talked about him, uh, talked about his deck with him and stuff. And then I just gave him like a pulse of Volthaven that was in my binder. I was like, here you go. Nice. He's like, what, really? I'm like, yeah, like it's good for your deck. You're going to be playing it. So yeah, here you go. And um, yeah, just those those tiny little things where it's like, I don't need this pulse of Volthaven. So it'll it'll work for your deck. And if you like it, then this will help you. And it just mm. feels it feels good to to sort of create that community and that um, that sense of belonging and acceptance. So I, uh, I'm really going to be making more of an attempt to actually go out to events. I, I know the next event that I'm absolutely required at is our, I believe it's the ProQuest in January. Hmm. Um, and uh, I'm going to be judging that. And so oh. I'll, get the, uh, I'll get the Soraya sleeves and stuff, but at least I'll be there. That, that'll help. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah. Very cool. How about, yeah. how about you, Az? Um, what are your plans for 2023? Go again, gaming. Uh, yeah, so 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 mirroring exactly what Bill said there is trying to get down to more events because I went down to the 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 game store that I mentioned on the last podcast. It was down in uh, Oxfordshire, so I'm in I'm in Wiltshire, UK. Oxfordshire is the next county to the to the east uh, of me, basically, um, and it's a little store called Mystic Games. Um, so um, that's probably the closest one to me that hold, which hold armory events so I'm going to try and get down to more of them one of my goals for next year is actually being able to finally learn to drive and get a car so I can get there more often um, so I can go down there pretty much every Monday or every every fortnight or so so yeah personally personal goal for me is is yeah just, just learning to drive so I can go places and when I travel to USA or wherever I might go next, I can rent a car and get around easier. Just makes things a lot easier. Um, unless you're in Canada where you're just snow uh, under under mountains of snow, <laughs> you can't drive yeah. anywhere. Um, but um, but yeah, that's one of the uh, one of the personal goals I have. Content wise, uh, got loads loads of different things um, that are on the list. So first of all is the what's the card trivia show, which is going to start oh, next yeah. year. 
Um, so I'm going to be doing that. Got a lot of people sort of interested in doing that and being involved in uh, certain panels. Uh, I'm going to be doing, obviously, continuing the Azalea Cult series with the uh, aforementioned Jim from Fab TCG Cards. He's on there. Um, going to be starting a Clash series, weekly sort of casual gameplay series with another very, very small UK-based content creator. Um, and it's going to be edited in the way that I used to do gameplay series. So it's going to, going to be good to watch. Um, travel vlogs, so anywhere I go, I'm going to try and take the... the amazing gopro with me so i can try and get as much footage <laughs> as i can um just stick it in people's faces and see what see what sort of gold comes out um so yeah vlogs and then i'm going to try and get back to doing a um local game store series as well so i did three four episodes of that in the first year on youtube and it was received quite well um and i've already got a few game stores uh that have said that they want to get involved with it again. Um, so I'm going to go travel to those and do like a little store spotlight as well on those. So I really enjoy those. Love going to different cities and traveling around and seeing game stores, like going to France and meeting the uh, magnificent French man in rock and bowl. That yeah. was good fun. Um, but um, but yeah, that's that's what I like doing, I like traveling around and meeting people and doing stuff. So yeah, yeah lots of different things. Nice. Um, oh, and also, and also, yeah, I want to get, I want to get my channel monetized as well. So, for people out there that are content creators, you don't get monetized just by hitting a thousand subs. What you also yeah. need to do mm -hmm. is you need to get, you need to get four thousand watch hours as well, right? Yeah. Um, so it's not, it's not all hunky dory. When you get to one thousand, it's not like, oh yeah, I'm a YouTube superstar. That's not the, that's not the case at all. Um, so you have, you actually, people actually have to watch your stuff, you know, for four thousand hours. Um, um is is one of the metrics what, what you say what as is about to find out is that after you go through all of this hard work and you finally <laughs> get monetized you're not gonna make like any money at all you're gonna get exactly you're gonna get like pennies man like youtube does, pennies, not, yeah. does not pay well um no like no exactly i could i could tell so, you i i think uh pleasant kenobi did like a, a breakdown of all of his like youtube finances yeah. a, a while ago and um I mean, I can yeah. tell you from my personal experience, I earn my channel, the views that I do, I earn between three to four hundred bucks a month. That's that's, that's from I, YouTube on its own. That's from YouTube, yeah. yeah like that's how much yeah, money. Yeah, so that's just ad revenue. Yeah, that's how much money Google pays me, like because YouTube is owned by Google. That's how much money that Google yeah. pays me into my bank account a month. Yeah. Three, three to five hundred, mostly closer to mm. like the the three side. Um, yeah. So if you if you're pulling in a hundred thousand views a month, you can get like five hundred bucks. If you're getting about a hundred thousand <laughs> views a month, like I like I did last month. Um, so that's that's the metrics there. So like, YouTubers aren't making. It's not like you. It's not like you get a dollar a view or something. You know, that's not how it works. You get you get like half a penny like a view. It, if if it they watch the ads. Be good. If they watch the ads. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um. It, so, it's kind of wild. <laughs> That's that's what like <laughs> Patreon and doing like other work is really good for. I mean, personally, so this is another like just personal. This is a very strictly like business thing that this is just a personal thing that I want to do more of next year. Um, this year is a year that I actually worked with um, some TCGs doing consultant work, and I also uh, did some sponsored stuff with some companies. Next year, I'd like to do a little bit more of that kind of stuff. Like um, not a ton because I like doing whatever that I can, but um doing that kind of work is great and helps pay the bills so um yeah, exactly yeah 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 i mean that's just yeah that's just how it is i also like i said i like to do some more coverage because coverage is also mm. is great and it lets me travel um so yeah anything that anything that you know if you if you, as long as you're getting as long as you're getting you know value out of it whatever you whatever you perceive value to be is that monetary gain is that you know the ability to meet people is that traveling the world whatever you value you know whatever you value your value to be as long as you're getting that from your content or whatever you're doing then that's then that's then that's great as long as that fulfills you um then yeah. just keep doing it but um but yeah, uh, so so yeah, I was saying four thousand watch hours is what you need to get the metrics, and then yep. I think I'm at, I think I'm at about three thousand at the moment, so I need another thousand watch hours. But I think the other good thing as well for people that are watching this that might be creators or what have you, 
live streams help with that a lot because if people are tuning into a live stream, typically they'll stay there for the whole time. Well, the people that you know regularly tune into my Tuesday and Thursdays, they stay there for the whole thing, which is two hours per person. And if you're averaging about 10 to 15 people, that's 30 hours on one video, which is pretty good. Mm. So, yeah, live streams, I think, are very good for trying to hit those metrics and also engage with your audience that are coming back every week, you know, because you're they're there in the chat. They're chatting to you. It's a great way to engage. So yeah, live streams is going to definitely going to continue for uh, me and as well as as well as Kel as well is going to be doing it. We're doing one after this you, ultimate pit yep. fight. Yeah, I um, I honestly think I so I like I like live streams for a different reason other than like so engaging with the community having the live aspect is really fun but there's one yeah. other aspect that I think is actually good for for my channel specifically but it could be for other channels too so like YouTube yeah. heavily punishes you if you have a poorly performing video like so if you have a, if you put out a video mm. and, it, and it sucks if it bombs then YouTube yeah. will be less likely to recommend your next video and it can have a really bad snowball effect um, and so yeah. that's why people are super clickbaity, not just because they want to get the views, but also because YouTube incentivizes that kind of behavior. Um, yeah, unfortunately, you need yeah. to have a, a good like average all yeah. the time. Yeah. Like even yeah. if um, there's one creator, I think it's uh, a YouTube creator that I actually really enjoy watching, and uh, he's just very vocal about like different issues and stuff. It's a mm. channel called How to Drink, and uh, he just does like <laughs> cocktail stuff. Yeah, he does yeah. like bartender stuff. He's he's really cool. He's really funny, but um, he's very vocal about how shitty YouTube is to content creators. And it's like, um, yeah. I think at one point he saw somebody say like, "Oh yeah, like it's, it's okay. You can take a a week off on a video if you're just like not feeling it. It's better to put out good content than a bunch of content." And then in his like on his um, dashboard, it was like because you didn't put out a video last week, we're not recommending your videos as much. It's like yeah. okay, so so that was a lie then. <laughs> like yeah. it's right. it's literally telling you put out as many videos as you can. Like you have to do well on them. Like it sucks. It can be so soul crushing. Yeah. Um. Mm-hmm. um but uh, yeah. So it's, that's where in my opinion, find something that works live streams come in um yeah because live streams and shorts i don't like shorts though because i'm not like a tiktok kind of person and shorts no, just remind me, shorts remind me of tiktok um yeah. yeah unless i have like a fun idea i'm not gonna do it i had a fun idea for for warhammer that i posted on my warhammer channel that has like a lot of views now but I, it was just a funny <laughs> thing about anime and warhammer um like live streams are, are i think a way for me to showcase games that i don't think will get a lot of views but I can still make content and have fun with them. Um, because if I do, if I have a stream and the stream doesn't do very well, YouTube doesn't give a shit. Like YouTube doesn't care like that. The stream didn't do mm. as well. Um, Cause it, it, it judges the metrics separately. So um, I might be streaming more, not more, but like that's where I might put like these other games that I kind of want to do a video on, but I don't think it'll do well. Like soul forge. Yeah. Like I just played soul forge with Ian and I was like, I don't think soul forge will do that great. But I could do a live stream. It'd be fun to play it. And people can help us because we're new. And if it doesn't do very well, who cares? Like, mm-hmm, exactly, yeah. Doesn't hurt, mm. doesn't hurt my channel. So um, that's where yeah. I, that, I might put some of the smaller games that I don't plan on covering more often um, that are just like random like one-offs. Like other games like Sorcery and Gen- uh, not Genesis. I do like Genesis, but the Genesis never does very well for views. Um, uh, Grand Archive, Grand Archive. I will put those on the main channel because those ones actually do well. Like those will get like average or or better ish, you know, type of views, like a thousand plus, depending on the topic. Um, mm. So that that's one thing that I I have thought about a lot. Not just next year, but just in general. I want to do live streams. Obviously, it's mostly going to be Flesh and Blood, but occasionally, it could be an, a different game. It could be even a dead game, right? And I think that that space, just in general, by the way, that. The, the, the tabletop card gaming stream space is super undertapped. Like, no one, mm-hmm. almost no one does it, especially in, like, trading card games. Because everyone who does it plays, like, Arena or, like, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links or whatever, whatever it's called. Yeah. Like, they play the digital yeah. versions. They don't play, like, the physical versions. The only, like, bigger one, bigger people I can think of is Team Covenant. And, like, 
no one else there's like there's like board game channels that do it and there's like warhammer channels that do it but for trading card mm-hmm. games like physical trading card games it's like team covenant so mm-hmm. that's a tip to folks out there who you you know want to find a niche in the content creation space that's one that i think is like wide open um and so yeah it's something that i might be doing a little bit more just for fun like so if i want to have like a play a dead board game with 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 a friend or dead card game like we can do that and yeah Yeah. it doesn't matter if it only gets like you know 500 views or whatever um so yeah that's something I, i think about a lot uh to cap this off let's talk maybe a little bit about uh my or our plans for living legends in uh, 2023 that's the po- this yeah. podcast the one you're listening to right now yeah, um this one <laughs> yeah yeah um, <laughs> so i have some guests lined up they're really exciting guests so a lot of guests uh, from lss i want to continue to get more guests from lss so uh fans of flesh and blood and just you know everyone out there can get a, a better understanding of um flesh and blood as a whole like you know not just the card game aspect but maybe some design maybe some art maybe some you know like we talked to alan about uh, organized play like all aspects of this game that we love that goes into making the game what it is and so uh the next guest that we have lined up uh we have uh sam yang has agreed to come on in january so sam will be on in january we're gonna talk about art um it's gonna be a lot of fun maybe talk about a little bit of like design um and uh, all that kind of great stuff, the creative side. Uh, James White has also agreed to come on um, uh, next year. I, we don't have a set time yet. Um, it's a little bit more nebulous because I think it would be cooler to have him on closer to outsiders so we can maybe get some juicy details about it. Absolutely, he, yeah. He'll probably be more be willing done. Probably be more willing to give us some, some little uh, exclusive tidbits if it's closer to the launch. Um, yeah, and then obviously we're gonna have uh, the professor on uh, at some point as well. Uh, basically, he just told me whenever he's just like, let me know whenever. And so when we when we have a good time um, next year. Um, and then Fantastic. other than that, there's a bunch of other folks from LSS that I would like to invite. Uh, I would like to know <clears throat> if you are listening or watching out there. If you have any folks from Legend Store Studios that you would like to hear from in particular, let me know. And I will reach out to them and ask them. Um, other folks that I know include the old Session Blood podcasters, um, like Carol, who work at LSS now. So they used to be podcasters who work at LSS. Um, Kieran and Carol, they were both on my Worlds vlog because I, you know, chatted with them a little bit. And mm-hmm. I was like, we have like a, I was like, Session Blood reunion episode. Um, so I think those guys would be great to have on. Um, Maybe other artists or other people from the creative team. I haven't asked her yet. And I don't know if MJ does interviews, but getting MJ on would also be super cool. If you don't know who yeah. MJ yeah. is, she's the one who basically designed the look of Flesh and Blood outside of the art. So all of the symbols, card borders, card back, packaging. She basically designs like the look and feel of the game outside of like the art. So getting her on to talk about like the designing the card borders the card back that would be super interesting because i i don't know if anyone's ever done an interview about that no Um, i think um i think alex would be good to get on as well alex norville who's obviously taken over from uh, chris um obviously there was a um that uh, i think a lot of the content creators got the email like the the marketing email that announcing all of that sort of stuff so it's not it's not uh, secret knowledge or anything it's definitely known out there now um so uh, yeah alex is now taking over the content creation sort of space uh, in flesh and blood so it would be nice to have him on as well to see what his vision is for how he's going to work with creators in the future i know we spoke spoke to him at worlds oh, um, i, I talked to him. Wa- yeah, I, I talked to him for like two hours. Um, two hours. I talked to him for a long, a long time about stuff. There's some cool, yeah, cool, cool stuff that's gonna happen next year. But uh, yeah, he had a sure wacky that. vision for an uh, for an Azalea scene. That's all I'm gonna say. Really, okay. Azalea <laughs> walk. Azalea walks into a bar and kicks loads of people's asses. I don't know whether that was a uh, whether that was a uh, hint into outsiders or whether that was his vision for something else. But that's what he said to me. Uh, um, I, I can see that happening. I think he's got a good mind for yeah. it. I, like I said, I talked to him a lot. And uh, mm. it sounds a lot like they want to focus more 
on the lore and the, the characters. World. I think that's really yeah. important. We talked about it earlier in this episode, but uh, people can yeah. really connect to these characters. And focusing more on that, I think, is great. I think it's just really, really good. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, Alex would be good. Uh, just so people know, by the way, and so there's not any, like, speculation or anything, Chris Bewley <clears throat> uh, didn't get fired or anything. Um, he's actually just going to uh, pursue some lifelong dreams of his. Um, yeah. It's something that I've known for a little yeah. while. Uh, Chris, Chris told me, like, I don't know, like a month or month or so ago. Um, and, uh, yeah. So it's actually, like, kind of like a bittersweet thing. He's like moving on to things that he wants to do with his life, which is great. Um, and we have Alex replacing him and Alex seems like a really cool guy. So um, I think it's just all good. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, I just want to, I just want to mention as well. I've got a couple of, uh, I put uh, in my discord, I've got like a living legends mailbox where mm-hmm. I, I say, uh, I said, what's everyone's goals or hopes for next year can, can be personal or fab related. Yeah. I'm going to be talking about the topic uh today so a few a few people have said uh so andrew i'll shout you out hoping to support the lgs and get a community of fab going locally nice. plus hoping to get to an event and meet so, meet some more people of the discord so he's speaking about that one uh someone else is saying big boss book club along with mason i'm hoping to support the card tavern getting their fab community off the ground before the next kid comes along and i can't get there for a while so a lot of people want to get down more to local game stores, similar to how me and Bill want to do that. We want to get down more and try and hopefully support that more in the future. Um, someone saying they want to uh, hit their their deadlift goal from, for, from, for, from something else. So other people want to get healthier in the new year. But what do you, what do you want to do? People watching this now in the future, you know, what, what's your goals? Leave yeah. a comment in the section below as to, uh, as to what you want to do yeah, because please. there's fab or personal, yeah. you know? In addition to commenting what we said earlier that I already forgot about because I have the memory of a young squirrel, com- comment that as well. Comment both of them. We'll know if you lovely watched... old job it was. Yeah, lovely oh, old yeah, yeah. job. So we'll know if you've watched the whole episode if you comment <laughs> both of those things. Um, yeah. So your yeah. your your goal, your personal or fab related yeah. goal, and then also a lovely old job. It was like two, two on the hour, end of it. Like this two hour episode. Um, <laughs> it's actually two hours. Yeah. Yeah. I've been recording yeah. for wow. I've been recording for two oh eight, and we we chatted for like twenty minutes before, so it's a little bit under two hours. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's just that's just how these go. Like par, par for the just course. The LL pod. Um, yeah. And then like, like so. This, here's some other things we don't. I don't think we need to need to particularly hit these goals, but I think it's I think it's cool and fun to set goals too. So we've been doing yeah. Living Legends yeah. for half a year now, like six months. Um, I know it, it likely won't be a hundred percent consistent because like, you know. We, we do things or there's events, but I, w- I would like to continue the once a week kind of thing if we can, as, 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 as best as we can, basically. That, that's yeah. the goal. I think we only missed like one or two weeks, and that's because like Az and I went to Worlds one time, and like yeah. th- those are the only ones we really miss is when... Yeah. I think, I think we missed... No, I think we're... Yeah. Not, not, we're not making yet. this pretty consistent. Like, yeah. mm. especially... Um, today like unfortunately i'm not going to be able to to make it to the upf thing because i have a, a certification exam that i have to do for work on to yeah. on tuesday yeah and uh i just really need to make sure there, that i do that properly but there will be plenty i was of also like yeah i was like humming and hawing and i was like ah do i like do i say that i like that i just need the time to study or whatever and then i was like I don't want to skip Living Legends today. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I want to talk. I want to talk to you guys. I want to just be part of this. So yeah, yeah um, it's. And then obviously we want to be a podcast that you listen to and you show up every single mm-hmm. week, dear listener and or viewer. Um, mm. And you know we we saw a lot of folks at the end of the year like showing like oh these are the podcasts we listen to and we were we were on like a a good number of the ones at Flesh and Blood folks which was awesome especially considering we've only globally been- as well. We've only been yeah. around for six months, where a lot of the other folks have been around, you know, for the whole year. So, um, yeah, it would be cool if we can get on more of your lists, on all of your your your, <laughs> your top yeah. top viewed lists. Um, and I mean, it was like I said the other the other week. Like it's it's just so humbling to see people like actually supporting us and stuff. And our um, our episodes do like so well and i it's it's so like it it just warms my heart that people like comment like i read all of the comments on everything i keep looking back on our videos to see when new comments show up yeah um 
I, I just, you know, I, I don't want to comment using my own, my own personal YouTube because <laughs> that just makes me feel too exposed. But I do, I do read every comment and there are so many nice ones. It, and like you, you had mentioned, there was that other comment about, um, that, that, uh, that couple that went to their LGS and got kind of stomped. And I was like, oh, like that sucks. But uh, like, you know, I think that's, some, that is something that is the type of engagement I want to see because there yeah. are changes that should definitely be made. Yeah to just games uh to, to flesh and blood events in general and i think there really actually should be more of like a casual focused night uh which is something yep. that i think kel has been saying for a long time mm. um but yeah hearing those stories is great every time like i i appreciate everybody and it's it's just been such a a wild ride these past six months what what we should do and this is like way way far out if if we all manage to make it to an event together next year, which I, I really think and hope we'll, we will, um, yeah. we should do like um, a community thing. Like maybe yeah. we'll have a community UPF game or something like that. So like we have a, we'll have like a li Living yeah. Legends community thing. So if we're, if we're all at the event, so cool. yeah, we'll, we'll schedule a thing. We'll tweet about it. We'll be like, hey, we're, we'll do a thing at this day, at this time. Come join us. Just play some UPF or whatever. Maybe, maybe mm -hmm. we can come up with some some little thing to give out or something. I don't know, but it'll be something. Yeah. It'll be fun. Um, yeah. And if it's like most flesh and blood events, we could actually make it into like a pseudo official thing because you can do play anywhere. Um, yeah. So we can have folks sign up for it and like that kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. let us know if you're interested in something like that too. Um, but if, if there's like a outsiders world premiere event and we're all there, I think it would be rad as hell to do that. So <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. 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 So, look forward to that. Definitely. Look forward to that in 20, 2023. Um, mm -hmm. I think we're we're gonna skip the Arsenal step this time because we've already been talking for like two hours. We'll do that. Yeah, next, we've arsenal throughout the day. Yeah. 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 We'll do that next week probably. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, thank you all so much for taking the time to be here. I uh, appreciate everyone who like just watches and listens. Um, yeah, you're all, you're all awesome. I wasn't lying when I said uh, we have the best community. We have the best community. They're all great. Yeah, there was a whole episode. There was a whole episode based on we had the fact we had the best viewers, wasn't there? So we do. We do have the best viewers. <laughs> best viewers in flesh and blood. Let's viewers go. and listeners. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Best, best viewers. Um, and, and the and the couple that, the couple that commented about getting getting you know getting battered by angry pirates or whatever the context was. <laughs> Stick with the game because obviously, as we've discussed in this episode, there will be more social and casual formats where you can play whatever you want to play, but more, yeah. you know, against a game system or around a table with other people yeah. that are, you know, similar mindsets. So at the very just, least, you can trust stay with us it. to be paragons of that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, and I'll keep, so, yeah. I'll keep suggesting it to LSS and whatever, like support casual game nights or social game nights. That would be so good. Um, yeah. And like I said, we talked about it prominently in this episode. UPF, LSS, they're aware of it. So I don't think it's mm -hmm. out of the question. So yeah. Exactly. And hopefully that, that can translate into like a PvE kind of thing, which would be cool too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So with th that all said, where can folks find y'all? Let's go to Az first this time. Oh yeah, so uh, so I'm Az from Go Again Gaming. Uh, as you can see on the screen here, if you're watching, uh, all the social tags for me, Bill, and Kel will all be on the uh, on the in the boxes. Uh, so yeah, on Twitter it's at Go Again Gaming AZ, uh, and on YouTube it's just Go Again Gaming. And uh, yeah, focus mainly on uh, our supreme leader Azalea at the moment. Maybe in the new year, we'll, as I said, we focused on uh, on other other series and other things as well, where I might actually play a different hero for once. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, but uh, yeah, Gus on Go Again Gaming YouTube, so you can uh, go check out there. You need to do. You need to clickbait the hell out of that that video if you ever do that, and you need to like green screen you, and you're like, yeah. It's like as plays new, <laughs> as plays different hero, and then there's, yeah. and then there's Azalea, and she looks like sad or crying or something. She has like yeah, the, yeah, like the, the crying oh, uh, meme face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh. As his new favorite hero, Viscerai. What? Yeah. <laughs> That's Here we go. Do. You got to do the the old fashioned clickbait with like the National Enquirer magazines that you see at like grocery store <laughs> checkouts. Yeah. Where it's like, as cheats on Azalea, yeah. she's in shambles. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. 
Oh man. That, that was, I was wearing like sweatpants and holding like a uh, coffee or something. Seen outside of no, like a Tesco's. No no makeup. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> The breakup is real. Oh, yeah. it's so good. <laughs> uh, I can, I can, I can just, I can picture it. Yeah. I still come crawling back. You know, you still come crawling back. Uh, it's the course. It doesn't matter if you dominate me over and over again. It doesn't matter, my love. Just do it again, please. <laughs> anyway, uh, carry on. Throw it over to Bill. Get yeah, out Bill. Of there quick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're having way too much fun with this. Um, yeah. I am Bill from the Spike Feeders. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at BillTSF, and you can also find me on YouTube at the Spike Feeders Fab. Uh, as I was saying earlier in this episode, uh, we do live gameplay content. We're in a little bit of a hiatus, but we're going to be hitting 2023 pretty hard and um, attempting to come back with some excellent content for everybody to enjoy. Uh, and for everybody that was supporting me previously, thank you so much for your patience uh, and for your previous support. Uh, hope to see you in the new episodes. Hell yeah. Lovely. Yeah, so once again, <clears throat> once again, thank you all so much for watching, for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a good one, everyone. Thanks so much, everybody. Peace.